charts. There's no advanced developed country on earth that would put up with this. And he says despite the bloodiest rampages, lawmakers have balked. It's not even possible to get uh, even the mildest uh, restrictions through Congress, and, and that's uh, we should be ashamed of that. Interviewed for the social media site Tumblr, Obama blamed the political clout of the NRA and said things won't change unless voters demand it. Meantime, he says America takes the carnage for granted in ways that, as a parent, he finds terrifying. Mark Smith at the White House. Texas Senator Ted Cruz has made good on his promise to renounce his citizenship in his birth country. Ross Simpson reports on Cruz's major decision. Doing so fuels speculation that Cruz could make a run at the White House in 2016. He was born in Calgary, Alberta in 1970, while his American mother and Cuban father were working in the oil business there. Still, the citizenship issue could be a thorny one for Cruz. The U.S. Constitution says only a, quote, natural-born citizen may be president. Legal scholars, however, generally agree that the description covers foreign-born children of U.S. parents. I'm Ross Simpson. For the second day in a row, President Obama has fled the White House to escape the pressure of life inside the executive mansion. This time, the nation's chief executive went out for a burger lunch. Hey guys. A day after walking to a Starbucks on Pennsylvania Avenue, the president dropped in on a burger joint in Alexandria, Virginia. So what is going on here? I think the president uh, thought it was a beautiful day to go out to lunch. Still, spokesman Josh Ernest agrees that after other recent jaunts to see a little league practice and to talk to visiting tourists, Obama is pining to get outside the bubble. The president has been looking for opportunities to do that recently. Of course, he's hardly the first president to feel cooped up here. Harry Truman and Bill Clinton both called the White House the crown jewel of the U.S. penal system. Makes you wonder why anyone runs for the right to live here in the first place. Mark Smith at the White House. And seven dancers with Cuba's National Ballet are saying they came to the U.S. because they had no future in their homeland. Tony Winton has more on the high-profile defection. Rehearsing for a performance in Miami just days away, seven new arrivals, members of the Cuban National Ballet, now in the U.S. Several said they'd wanted to leave for years and had planned their departure months in advance. They fled after a performance in Puerto Rico, then headed to Miami. Many said they simply felt they had little future in Cuba, and they may have reason to feel encouraged. Another group of seven dancers that fled while on tour in Mexico last year have all found work at U.S. dance companies. Tony Winton, Miami. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. After years of weekly meetings with his psychologist, local man Chris Vaughn told reporters today he was excited to only have two sessions left before completely resolving all of his emotional issues and never having the need to return to another therapy session again. When I started therapy, I knew if I could make it through exactly 120 50-minute sessions with Dr. Warner, then all of my issues with depression and crippling anxiety would be gone. Next week, we're covering my parents. The week after that, we're wrapping up my trust issues and then I should be good to go. According to Vaughn, it took 40 sessions alone to fully resolve his feelings of inadequacy and low self-esteem resulting from an unhappy childhood. Vaughn's therapist, Dr. Susan Warner, told Onion reporters that she's pleased with her patient's progress and relieved that his longtime emotional and cognitive issues are nearly solved for good. I told him that getting healthy would take at least 100 hours of therapy, and now he'll never have to see me again. Thank God for that. That guy was a real piece of work. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Three, three. You can call and talk about anything you'd like to talk about here on this live edition of Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Brett. When I say it's live, I mean it's live. Free Talk Live does has done a live program every night for years. Mm-hmm. Years we've done it. Now, your station may be uh, delay broadcasting the program, but we're here live every evening, 7 to 10 Eastern Time. So... If you like Free Talk Live, you love listening, but your station 
delay broadcasts, not a problem. As a matter of fact, it's a benefit to you because you can call in between 7 and 10 and then listen to yourself later. That's the best. That is, it's always a surprise when it's like, whose voice is that? Boy, yeah. they don't sound like me at all. And then you find out it's you. Yes. There you go. So anyway, um, our normal main host, Ian Freeman, is, well, he's off someplace participating in the, uh, the, the democratic process. I think it's some kind of city meeting thing that sounds frustrating no and, and i'm sure it is <laughs> i partic- i participated a little bit today and i can say frustration was high on the list of uh, descriptors yeah yeah absolutely indeed so um but we're gonna get right into show content here if he has something he wants to say when he gets back if he gets back i don't know i, I got no clue but uh apparently Brett, I mean, we know that the the public school system full of miscreants, uh, of children that misbehave, um, they need uh, they need discipline, discipline, discipline. And it, apparently, there's one young man who uh, it, it, you just can't do anything with some of these kids. Yeah, this is an interesting story, and uh, the theme here is zero tolerance, one that we've devoted quite a bit of time to uh, on the show in the past. This is from Reason.com. The title is "Kid Twirls a Pencil in Class." New Jersey threatens to take him from his dad and requires blood and urine testing. It's quite a title. Yeah, it is. All right. So, well, he, I mean, I, I, I assume he was warned not to twirl the pencil. Come on. No. Okay. All right. So, there's <laughs> a, this story, an interesting twist. Um, in April, Ethan Chaplin was twirling his pencil in class when another kid, a bully, according to Chap, uh, Chaplin, called out, He's making gun motions. Send him to juvie, unquote. Okay. So now th- this zero tolerance thing, everybody knows about it, and it's basically like a joke or a threat. And, of course, unfortunately, also, too, it's something the teachers can hold over kids if they're having trouble controlling them, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, I remember being that they had those uh, child abuse uh, hotline ads on the TV when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. This is back when we had, like, six channels. Yeah. And uh, I... I remember saying at one point or another, just sort of laying down the uh, the law with the parents, is, look, things don't go my way. I could call that child abuse hotline. Yeah. Now, um, you know, I don't say anything nice about how I was with a, as a kid. Uh, you know, I think I was uh, a little brat who didn't realize how good I had it. But, uh, you know, this is it's the same thing. I mean, like it's just a it's a lever. It's using the government as a uh, as a cudgel to get what you want. Right. Right. And but also, you know, teaching, as I've said before, is a very obedient profession. Right. So they might not even feel like they're doing anything wrong. They're doing the good thing to, you know, report uh, something that winds up. And that's kind of what's going to happen here. So it starts with a joke. Some bully sees a kid twirling his pencil, and he says, he's threatening me with gun motions. And it takes off from there. Well, we don't know what the bully w- or this this other individual um, was thinking, but... Uh, right. We only he- know Ethan Chaplin's description of him at this point. Yep. But uh, it, what's clear is it starts as a joke, even if it's kind of a cruel joke. If Ethan is making pow-pow motions with his finger, mm-hmm. I think that we probably have gone too far... Sending sending him to the office sounds like too much to me, but okay, I'll go with sending him to the principal's office. Now, what if he was doing pow pow motions with like uh, I'm just trying to think of some of the incidents that I've heard about in the last couple of years? Chicken fingers, chicken fingers. Yo. Oh, I mean, yeah. like with a uh, uh, like a pop tart. Uh, well, yeah, a kid had a chicken finger and he yeah. was going pow pow, with, yeah. like making a gun motion with it. Yeah, I believe uh, he was arrested. And, and these were little kids, too. This, this was not a middle schooler like Ethan. Yeah, well, I, I think that once we're getting up to high school, um, like, if you're, what, if you're, what you're trying to do is socialize kids to not make gun motions, yeah. um, I, I, probably mostly males, yeah. you should probably start with the kindergarten teacher saying, Johnny, Ethan, we don't make gun motions because it makes some people uncomfortable. Right. And then for, you know, the first... Six years, all of elementary school. I guess it's uh, it's up to fifth grade now. So the first f- six years of uh, of school, you you do nothing except have the teacher say that's inappropriate. We don't do that. Mm-hmm. And then in 
um, you know, in middle school, maybe you could have the teacher try to administer some kind of in-class uh, punishment for the behavior. And then for high school, you could perhaps send them down to the office. This is assuming what you want to do is to socialize out the behavior. But, the pow-pow. Yeah, yeah the pow-pow behavior. Um, but sending the kids to the, the cops is insane. Right, right. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's see what happened here. The 13-year-old was yanked out of school and thereby commenced his 15 minutes of fame as sites like Huffington Post as well as local cable news stations took up his cause, arguing that a suspension for pencil twirling was zero tolerance run amok. The Vernon Township School District's interim superintendent claimed Ethan had never been suspended but conceded he had been out of school for two days, telling the uh, New Jersey Herald, quote, the story that we expelled or suspended a student is par uh, partially not true. We did exclude the student from attending until a proper psychological evaluation was done. Um, and then it goes on to say, if a student demonstrates odd behaviors, non-conforming behaviors, mm. pencil twirling and the pow pow we spoke of uh, already, uh, it causes us to take a closer look, he told the newspaper. If a student gestures or demonstrates a behavior that could be construed as a threat to others in a classroom, that's also a trigger for us, unquote. I saw a map of all the school shootings that had sort of uh, occurred since Sandy Hook, and I was surprised at the number. Mm -hmm. It's obvious these people are hypersensitive because of this. Yeah. But... The idea that you're going to catch some student, um, you know, that, uh, I mean, do we, I, I just, I remember running around on the playground going pow, pow. We actually had wars that we fought with sides and teams and took prisoners and the whole thing, um, the whole statist agenda. And somehow or another, the world spun on. Yeah. Did you ever do machine? We had machine guns, I remember. Did you remember the machine gun sound where you would kind of spittle? Yeah. Some people, they, there's two different machine gun sounds. Um, there's the, uh, the you know, and I just don't, I don't know if it's regional or why some kids <laughs> go uh, differently, but there's okay. the, bah, like the, that one that sounds like a sheep. Have you, sure. heard, have you heard people um, implement that one? No. Uh, no. Maybe that's not my region. It, it might not be. And then there's the one that's sort of like trilling your R's from uh, Spanish. The Through your teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, yes. Those that are one. the machine guns we had. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had, uh, being from Sarasota, Florida, where uh, where cr cultures cross, <laughs> we had uh, kids that would, uh, would use both of these different uh, systems to, uh, you know, imitate a machine gun. Well, uh, that sounds like a terrible amount of confusion. <laughs> Somehow we managed on. Machine guns versus sheep. By the way, um, it was uh, the north versus the south is how we uh, s set it up. So the people that were born regionally in the south uh, were on the Confederate side, and um, the ones that were born regionally in the north were on the Union side. So what was this, like a new civil war? Essentially, yeah. Wow. We, we, we used the picnic tables um, as prisons. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think I think we were transformers <laughs> like the trans. I mean, I'm a few years younger than you, but we were the transformers. And for some reason, we had machine guns. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I can't see the transformers wouldn't have machine guns or at least uh, rapid fire laser guns. Yeah, yeah. Well, Civil War reenactments sound much more dignified. I, I, I don't think that we um, were like loading our muskets, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, you had machine guns. Right. And machine new, guns. New Civil War. Um, all right. So we can uh, pick this up in a few. There is more to the story. Indeed. Uh, what do you think about kids getting suspended for finger motions and, and these sort of things? We have yet really to have a conversation with somebody who believes that this is legit. Um, so, I mean, I'd love to hear the reasonable other side of this. Absolutely. 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Can education be separated from the state? Today, people go to college, do coursework, repeat what professors tell them, get degrees, and are issued official transcripts from state-approved institutions. These transcripts are given to potential employers as proof of coursework. In the future, people will learn online and obtain pseudonymous academic credentials associated with their Bitcoin address. That future 
is now. At MathGate.info, you can learn basic reasoning skills. Instead of getting a transcript associated with your name, you can obtain cryptographic proof that the owner of your Bitcoin address learned these skills. Then, apply for jobs online using your Bitcoin address instead of your government-sanctioned name. Since MathGate.info is designed to be used anonymously, you can be sure that you will not be discriminated against or shown favoritism due to your race, gender, political or religious views, and so on. There is only one factor by which you will be judged, your ability to reason. Be at the vanguard of separating education from the state by visiting MathGate.info. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call one 800 68 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Do you need access to money? Do you need cash today? If you are receiving a structured settlement due to a lawsuit or you are receiving pension payments over a long period of time, the Money Settlement Hotline can get you instant funding now. With your cash today, you can pay off credit card debt, pay medical bills, fund your education, or improve your home. You don't need to wait. It's true. If you're receiving a structured settlement or pension payment spread out over time and you want a lump sum amount immediately, then you need to call now. They will turn your long-term structured settlement or pension payments into a lump sum larger cash payout, so you'll get all of your money instantly. If you have a structured settlement or pension and you want cash today, call the Money Settlement Hotline right now. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. 888-785-0616. That's 888-785-0616. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. This live edition includes Mark and Brett. We are expecting Ian Freeman back at some point the relatively near future, but I don't know. You know, whenever, wherever, who's going to show up? It's uh, He's a free spirit like that. I enjoy these shows that, that you and I do together. I think this is the third one when it's just been me and you. Yeah, Ian, I, I guess uh, Wednesday nights are a good bug out night for uh, for Ian, huh? It's it's nice with two people. Well, it's good when we get the calls, that's for sure. Absolutely. Um, I think the, the, you know, the numbers, it actually can get crowded with uh, two hosts on a, uh, on, on, uh, when, when the calls are coming in. Sure. But uh, I love it when the calls don't come in and there's three. So I think it's fine that way, too. Yeah. 
Are you proud that the premier anti-war site on the internet is run by libertarians? Well, it's time to do something about it, because between some government fines levied against antiwar.com a few years back, the death of some major donors, along with those who panicked after the revelation that the FBI was monitor monitoring antiwar.com, they have found themselves in a tight spot. They cut the staff in half over the past several years, and um, which has spread to the remaining staff very thin. Right now, the top folks are foregoing salaries. They're committed to keeping the website going. Are you? Now, I love antiwar.com because it, you know, they 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 provide the only news out there that is clearly, um, you know, on the other side. Because the fact is uh, that it all seems so pro-war, and I I love to get antiwar's stuff because they they look at facts in a different fashion. So I love seeing them. If you've never been to the site, go check it out and see what you think about their reporting. But if you have been to the site, you likely know it. So, you know, what's up? They need uh, your donation. Please go to antiwar.com and donate or call them today. They do take bitcoins. In fact, they prefer bitcoin. They call it the peace currency. It's antiwar.com slash donate. Now is the time to act. Really. Right now. Antiwar.com. Let's go to Lot calling in from uh, Michigan City. Lot, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Brothers, namaste. Um, I would like to kind of, um, if you were to take every action done by individuals, and you could ultimately break them down into two categories, and simply put, it would be the, the kind of people that drink service. water and the kind of people who drink Coke? Everybody. Okay. Any and everybody's action. Ultimate action so they, in regarding of how they affect with one another and how they affect with other people. You usually have the idea it is that you see their service to self, so all of your actions are to service only your own personal needs, or you have service to others where you're willing to offer the hand. I mean, like you guys, you guys would be service to others because. You're on this radio show to provide information, to kind of open up ideas, and to allow others to express themselves, whether however they feel, regardless of whether it's ultimate truth or not, whether we feel it's right or wrong. But you guys offer that ability. Uh, so you guys okay, let's be, stop right there feel, for for a second. You're not okay. saying there's a clear line between the two, right? I see it much more as a Venn diagram, like. Obviously, I'm going to do things to serve self. I'm not here because I hate it, but the service that I'm doing is so valuable that I make a sacrifice, right? Right. Well, okay. For you, okay, for, as you will take you in, in, that, in that perspective, it would be that you provide a great service to others. Okay. You are allowed to have service to self. And it's in regards of how you would interact with, I guess, other people would be more in particular of how your actions would be judged along one of those two lines. Because if you're an, you know, a person of ignorance, you would be more tend to service to yourself. And if somebody were to ask you to do something, you would be more inclined to do so knowing that there is something that's going to benefit you rather than just doing it because you have the opportunity and the time to why do Why are so. we using the Whereas, word ignorance? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure why ignorance no, just, gets I'm tied into service. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I'm not sure why ignorance gets tied into service to self. You're not, if you're not serving yourself and, and doing what's best for yourself first, I don't know how useful you are to other people. Do, uh, do, agree or disagree? The yeah. Well, uh, uh, or, or or just I go on. But well, so here's what I, here's what I think, Lot. I think that that uh, you're putting okay. a, an artificial distinction in the way. Yes, I I believe that. Um, everybody, I believe it centers around ignorance, but the, the, what the ignorant people don't know is that they, in fact, must serve others to be successful. That to get what they want, they must serve others. Um, I don't, you know, like if you start out doing your service because you realize you have come to the conclusion that your life will be better if you serve others, then at some point or another, you'll just get used to the idea of service and you'll forget that that's the reason you're doing it because you'll be enjoying your really great life. Um, well, so for me, that's that's really what I it's mean, about. I, I would I, I would I would agree because the your 
the benefit that you're looking from, the aspect that you're looking from the service of others is because you are helping other people, you are being benefited. You feel benefited because you know that you're, you're helping people. You're, you're helping people in situations that they necessarily can't do themselves and they need just that little bit of confidence and that little bit of boost. And that would be classified as service to others. Maybe you're right. I was wrong in the sense of using the term ignorance. Um, I guess there's, there's not a, a word I could use to associate it properly. But well, I think we, I think, I think it was just, of, it's just coming to these conclusions. You got to kind of think about this stuff, roll these ideas around in your head, and talk to other people, and and see what uh, what comes out of it. Now, let me ask you this: If these ideas yeah. hold true, you'd think that um, you know humans are animals, right? Like we're primates. Why don't these rules yeah. work? in the entire animal kingdom. How come grizzly bears males fight other grizzly bear males for territory? How come lions kill gazelles uh, for food? How come they're not helping? How come helping doesn't work in the animal kingdom? Because of our consciousness, because we have consciousness, because we are self-aware of ourselves, we are we are capable of becoming aware of ourselves, we are capable of becoming aware of what others are doing we are of understanding of what this planet is doing whereas say our closest i guess they would say in scientifically that the closest relative is you know a primate and a if you were to take a prime you, if you were to take a chimpanzee and i think this is i've seen this in video and i'm sure you can go on youtube and find it but they had an experiment where they took a child and they took a chimpanzee and they offered them the same test and what it was is they it was a an l-shaped block they had to Put it upside down and have it face with the you know the, the long part of the L on top, and they had it set to where the first set of blocks they did were completely squared off, so it would sit there. The next set of blocks they had, they shaved off a corner a little bit, not necessarily noticeable to the naked eye, but enough to where when you set the block down, it didn't stay standing straight up; it kept tipping over. The human child, the child, looked at the block to observe why. Whereas the, the chimpanzee did no such. They just kept trying to put the block up, and it was main objective was to only put the block up, not to figure out why. What separates us is the ability to ask that question. Interesting. Thanks a lot. Appreciate the call. 855-450-FREE. That's 3733. You've been lied to. Lied to by corrupt Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, and I want to give you a free copy of my Inc. Magazine best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire, because Wall Street's 401k and other investment plans have failed millions of Americans. After losing 35% in my IRA in the crash several years ago, I said enough. Since then, I've discovered an IRS-approved way to safely grow my money up to 12 to even 17%, cut taxes dramatically, but also have my money protected when the next crash comes. Call now to talk with a specialist to discover this little-known strategy to potentially build a million-dollar tax-free retirement income, get potential 12 to 17% returns, and never lose when the next crash hits. Call 888-885-8820 and discover this tool that people like Walt Disney and J.C. Penney used to safely grow rich. Plus, get one of just 97 free books left. We even cover shipping and handling. Call 888-885-8820. 888-885-8820. Again, that's 888-885-8820. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons.
There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on to join the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can call in with whatever's on your mind. We've been talking this evening about, uh, well, a student that was suspended in New Jersey from a New Jersey public school for the dastardly crime of pencil twirling. Yes. Um, and uh, it's just amazing once somebody levels a crime, what uh, or levels a charge of crime, what, what happens? The idea was is that this... Somebody claimed that the pencil twirling was, in fact, gun motions with a hand, with a hand like finger pow pow motions. Yeah, and um, that resulted in the kid being not suspended, according to the school, but not allowed back into school until he gets uh, some kind of evaluation by a psychiatrist. So I, I mean, suspension's a sentence for an offense, whereas this is the period prior to the sentencing i don't know exactly there's a whole process here that we're going to see unfold when we get back to it indeed so i've recently been using a product called my magic mud it's a remedy for uh teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria that cause cavities and it's also a whitening uh, product it is all natural in that it's benzonite clay and uh, activated charcoal it's black it's amazing to look at in your mouth. It's uh, <laughs> as you're brushing your teeth, you're you're used to seeing sort of white foamy stuff. It's black, watery stuff, <laughs> and it's a powder um, actually. And you just uh, dip your toothbrush in there and and go to work. My teeth were noticeably whiter after one application, completely uh, devoid of stains after four. Oh, yes. How long does this take? Like the normal time of brushing teeth? Two minutes, yeah. They, That's uh, normal te teeth brushing time. Right. My uh, little Sonicare brush goes for two minutes, so I knew how long to do it. Yes. And it, it, but the thing is, is it makes my teeth feel slick, like just the after brushing slick all day. And so I don't, that's why I think that it really takes care of the bacteria because that slickness is like dead bacteria, right? Yeah. And, yeah. or li living bacteria and dead bacteria, whatever it is. And um, that, that film. And so the film just doesn't come back. If you, I, you know, I brush with this every other day now, and it's amazing. This product, mymagicmud.com. It was created by Jessica Armon, a liberty-loving liberty homeschool mother of three. 
She'll be at Porkfest with us coming up here in a couple of weeks. There'll be jars on sale, but if you're not making it to Porkfest, go to MyMagicMud.com and buy it now. Believe me. First, before you go, go, go to the website and you can listen to an interview with biological dentist Dr. Griffin Cole, and he explains a lot of the benefits of My Magic Mud. It's MyMagicMud.com, and it's a great product. I cannot recommend it more. I know a lot of our listeners have gotten it. People have already said, uh, written back and said that they really love it. So please, give it a shot. I think you'll really, it, I, I, th- I think it'll change the way you brush your teeth. Let's go to the phones and to the fun. Um, Ty, calling in from Tennessee. Ty, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, good evening, guys. Uh I've just got some questions here. It's kind of related to some topics that uh, that Brett has covered on the School Sucks Project podcasts. Mm-hmm. Uh, going back again with to the Thaddeus Russell and the non-aggression principle idea and the relation to property rights. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that from listening to what he's talking about, I think that I that his greatest challenge to this uh, non-aggression principle is challenging the the uh, perceived sanctity of arbitrary rules based on property rights. Do you understand what I'm getting at with that? Uh, maybe you could say it in a different way. I'm, I'm having well, a little trouble. Yeah. Okay. For instance, the the weed smoking at the hotel. Yeah. There are some people in the liberty movement who would consider that an act of aggression, smoking weed. And that and I really don't think that's right. Well, I think it's that, more complicated than that, right? Like, obviously, smoking weed is not an act of aggression. Smoking weed on somebody's legitimately obtained and owned property against their wishes or against, you know, the rules they've set down for that property would, even though aggression is, you know, such a strong word, it's certainly, uh, it's certainly a violation, right? It's certainly... Yeah, it's a violation of their rules, but by... Uh, by the idea of rationality, which to me includes the idea of proportion, mm-hmm. you know, the the most that they could do for somebody that violates their rules is send them away. You know what I'm saying? It's not like, you know, if, and when you talk about the non-aggression principle, I'm thinking of physical harm to person or property. And if that happens, then people have the right to protect themselves physically protect their property physically you know it's it's in proportion to what the violation is you yeah. understand what I'm getting at and there's no real harm done in violating arbitrary rules on somebody's private property yeah. if that violates that person's rules you know that they have the power rightful power to remove that person from their premises well, we're all, that's the extent of it. We're also having this conversation in a world, too, where it's very hard to achieve clarity because of the existence of the state, right? So is the, does the hotel have a, a legitimate complaint? Now, this is skipping across all of the arguments about it not being you know, legitimately owned property because it's government granted and they're a corporation. But if they, let's just say they do own the property legitimately because the state does exist— are they? Do they have a right to forcefully remove people uh, smoking pot because smoking pot is against the law? Are they protecting themselves and their property by removing uh, lawbreakers so they don't appear to be a haven for criminals? I think there's a case for that. The, the main thing I'm trying to get at is I'm challenging some of the people who come across with the idea that 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 smoking weed incident is actually a violation of the non-aggression principle because it's, it is not aggression. It, it is a violation of rules, arbitrary rules. I agree to that. It's, it's, you know, you could say it's wrong to do that, but there's no harm done. So I don't consider that an act of aggression or a violation of the non-aggression principle. I'm with you. I think, uh, I think you guys have really parsed it out uh, exactly right, that this is, in fact, a violation, not a violation of the non-aggression principle. Absolutely. And just in case somebody is joining us from far away and they know none of what we're talking about, uh, there was an incident at an event called Liberty Forum where some uh, activists at this New Hampshire hotel were smoking marijuana in their hotel rooms. Uh, an author and a historian named Thaddeus Russell, who wrote a book called The Renegade History of the United States, came to the event, smelled the smoke, and made it like a central part of his speech, kind of valorizing (laughs) this act that this is how things actually change. You know, when people do what they want 
wherever they want. And it turned into a larger debate on my show because we talked about it being a property rights issue with the hotel. Uh, his claim was is that a corporation like Hilton or whatever doesn't legitimately own property because it's a government-granted monopoly. And also tied to that might be— Well, wait. A person could own a hotel, though. Absolutely. And at that point, their rules would count, but the rules don't count for the corporation? That That's, sounds— I agree. Sounds I, shifty. I agree. The, and, the, and, the part where I agree with Thaddeus Russell is where he says every— uh, progressive revolutionary thing that's been done like in the, in the 60s with you know peace movements and and uh, uh, I'm trying to kind of grasping for words but any kind of real progress would involve some sort of property rights issue like violating rules like yep. uh, blacks sitting at the front of the bus. You know, right. The blacks weren't going to get to the front of the bus by asking over and over again, can I sit in the front of the bus? That uh, was a violation of property rights rules, but not a violation of the non-aggression principle. I agree. Yeah, I don't. I, I know that some um, municipalities had rule had like ordinances about where blacks would sit, and the buses um, had to abide by those. So at that point, it's not a property rights issue. It's the um, it's it's a business person that if they want to operate, has to go by the rules that the city puts in place. I think in both cases here too, we're seeing examples of how. Uh, government can use corporations. If there are corporations or companies getting favor from gum government, they can also use them as enforcers, right? Ty, Ty, thank you for the call. And you can give us a call, too, at uh, on Skype at lrn.fm is the username, or you can give us a call at 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to FreedomFiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Hey everyone, have you heard about the No No Hair Removal Device that's sweeping the globe? If you want to go weeks without shaving and get smooth, professional quality results, here's our favorite host, Cheryl, for No No Hair Removal. Thanks. Hey gals, I love talking about my No No. It's this cute little hair removal system that you can take with you and use almost anywhere at home or on the road. No more expensive in-office treatments, painful waxing, and no more wasting your valuable time. Got unwanted facial hair? No No Hair has patented Thermacon technology that works on all hair and skin colors. So it's perfect for using on all body parts. And now you can take advantage of this incredible risk-free trial. Get the No-No, the facial kit, a travel case, and a $100 discount shopping card. And you don't risk a penny to try it. Try the incredible No-No hair completely risk-free. Call 1-800-953-6062. That's 800-953-6062. 800-953-6062. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more. 
or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Give us a call. Talk about whatever's on your mind. It's Mark with you. And Brett. 855-450-3733. And you can go to coffee.freetalklive.com and get a free pound of high-end, delicious BuzzBox coffee. It's shade-grown, 100% organic, top 1% grade Arabica beans. And the other thing about BuzzBox that's really unique is BuzzBox makes it possible for partners like Free Talk Live to offer a micro loan for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. We're able to offer another micro loan to help another family with a hand up out of poverty conditions into a better life. So you can drink the coffee you drink normally or get an upgrade to the coffee you drink by uh, drinking a better coffee. Um, but even if you drink high end, whatever coffee, you can drink the coffee you normally drink and help people around the world. I think it's a win, win, win. And that's why I, uh, got free talk live involved with buzzbox it's coffee.freetalklive.com to get your free pound you pay the shipping and you'll sign up for a subscription to get the free pound you can cancel that subscription at any time get your get your coffee cancel the subscription if that's what you want to do but um i i think you'll i think you'll enjoy the coffee and i think you'll want to continue getting it it's coffee.freetalklive.com let's uh let's go to the phones here we've got uh, james calling in from paradise James, you're on Free Talk Live. Yeah, it seems to me like hardly a day passes without a progressive or so-called academic labeling Republicans and conservatives racist. And given the power of repetition, Mark, one consequence is that many dope smokers actually, especially young ones, believe that one side of the political spectrum, the right, is racist. Yeah, I think it's a real and, problem uh, that, I, uh, I as far as ban- ban- branding it. goes for the Republican Party, because I would agree with you, Wit, that absolutely. I mean, Herman Cain was running, um, was the front runner at, I, I can't remember what year it was, 2011, for the Republican Party nomination for about three weeks until he sort of flipped out, I guess, um, or whatever. And it's obvious to me that core Republicans are not racist. Yeah. They have principles that they believe in, and uh, people people who are lazy intellectually will go ahead and uh, and call them racist just for the purpose of you know making it easy. But I don't think that uh, like the difficulty is is that black people know which party the Ku Klux Klan Ku Klux Klan votes for, right? I mean that's really. I don't, I don't want to talk about the KKK. I, I'm actually called in to talk to Brett. Oh, well, can I just, we we can do that, James. Let me make one more point. Let me just make one more point before we go on to this this other thing, because I know this is actually Uh something that we talked about before, I think, when you were on the show, how I talked about this conservative uh, code language. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's real, Uh but I I, I do think that there is something Uh that really needs to be said for progressives who Mm -hmm. every time... Uh, they can, every time they get an opportunity, try to dismiss whatever the issue is by claiming people are racist. And that is uh, that is definitely a real problem. And it is absolutely 
a debate stopper. So I didn't want to make it seem like I was only on one side of that. I think this is more nuanced. I think both sides have their fault. I mean, I think both sides are terrible, but uh, both sides I'm have their fault in this to debate. Talk about what Brett, Brett said on Free Talk Live, and both of you have gone off on at length. I wasn't implying that Mark is racist, nor did he need to go on on a defense. Oh, no, no, but no one's going on a defense. It's a radio Mark show, so we're trying to have a conversation. Party. I just, you both spoke at length, and I barely said anything. I want to still have a chance to respond to your smear and lying about the right-wing radio and the so-called dog whistle that only dogs are supposed to be able to hear. Mm -hmm. And uh, you doubled down on your smear okay. of right-wing talk radio. Leave aside, you mentioned the most decent and honorable person I know on the public radio who has never, ever blown a dog whistle. But my point, Brett, is I would like, again, to respond to your doubling down on that smear. Then respond. Thank you, Mark, because I think you would have a bunch of examples. Uh, speaking of afterbirthers, uh, there never been entertained and no, no such discussion has ever been uh, taken place on Dennis Prager's show about the so-called missing birth certificate. Now, I know to his great shame, Sean Hannity has, and if I ever met him, I verbally tear him apart limb by limb until he turned deaf white, literally, because I despise afterbirthers. What are afterbirthers? I, I, I think this I, is his uh, like, lingo. Afterbirthers are the losers in search of Barack Obama's missing birth certificate. That's what I call them, afterbirthers. But you're the one that brought up the birthers last time on Free Talk Live, and I have yet to get to respond to it because this so-called dog whistle that has such power on the right-wing talk radio, you must be able to name a bunch of powerful politicians in Washington that uh, actually believe that nonsense since there's so much power and so many racists on right-wing talk radio, which is the allegation you made. And you no, 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 no. I, say, I was up. trying to say that there was more nuance to this. So I wonder what the whole birther thing uh -huh. is, is all about. And, and I've tried to figure out all the politicians that bought into the birtherism Please name them all. There must be a bunch of them, because I can only think of a couple, uh, and they're white trash. They do exist. White trash does exist in the Republican Party, but it's insignificant, literally insignificant. But you must have a bunch of names, given the power of right-wing talk radio and this dog whistle that you said they blow. You know, I don't listen to Let much right-wing uh, talk radio, so, um, you I'm know. I'm talking to you, Mark. I'm talking to Brett. I'm asking Brett <laughs> a question. All right. Listen, uh, you, you can listen to what I have to say about this. Uh, th this is what I believe. I believe that this was uh -huh. a trick that the Republicans stole uh -huh. from the Democrats. Okay. And I heard that you don't need to repeat that nonsense about the evangelicals turned into the Republican, Reagan Republicans, and all that BS, which it is. Name the politicians in Washington that are looking for Barack Obama's birth certificate that got, luck, got elected because of the power of right wing talk radio. I don't. I, I, I think you're kind of like you framing this whole debate in a way that you want. What like you're I'm really is repeating, just kind of moving goalposts all around. Like right? I didn't even. What's your uh -huh. real issue? I, I'm, I'm aside from the fact I it's a new week and time for a new so issue. Him, the academic who reads and listens to too much Noam Chomsky and that coward's in, and you've turned into a piece of pseudo-intellectual Euro trash, literally. <laughs> Whoa! You, <laughs> you, my friend, are pseudo-intellectual Euro trash. trash. Yep. You're perverted. You, you have a perverted sense of U.S. history having been brainwashed by left-wing academics. Well, no I feel like I've escaped a lot of that. Like, I see where those guys were flawed. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally, I mean, that's where I came from. I was really like a left-wing guy one time, and it was a slow process out of that. Most people leave college, and they gravitate to the left because they don't know anything. And You know what the best actually, way to get somebody to change their mind, once, though? I was the best way to get somebody, wait, this is for you, too. The best way to get somebody to change their mind is to vilify them and take their position and pound it into the ground. When you're right, right you I'm just stick it to them over and over. Yeah. And then he can't back it up, Mark. Don't patronize me. Why don't you patronize Brett? 
Huh? What am I? Right. It, it sounds show. to me like Brett can't name of the politicians you're looking for, I, but I, I don't know that he ever could claim that he could. All about to begin with, and he's not shameful of it. He's not ashamed of it because the only no one that I Catholic. ever heard do it was uh, Donald Trump. But I don't pay that I much know, attention I'm, because Trump, I have I put you on Sean Hannity's show. I have put this whole left-right paradigm thing court. behind me. I rarely listen to talk radio. Yeah, I don't so. care about any of this. Like, I'm not going to defend Republicans. You brought or, it up, Brett. You brought it up, and I asked you to back it up, and you can't. I still stand by what That's I said. I still stand by what I said. What, but you're what? you're creating this criteria that means I'm backing it up, that I can name politicians in Washington that are influenced you by talk radio? Whistle. I asked you to who bought, who, who bought in, who hears it and reacts to it. You can't name one person. I, I think it's voters. I don't think it's politicians. Why is the Werther phenomenon a phenomenon? I mean, if nobody's saying it, it's then it wouldn't be a phenomenon. Clearly, people are saying it. They were talking about this birth certificate. Some and I've got to say, like I think... Corsi peddle dope and make money off it just like Ian Freeman does okay he's a dope dealer that's why I call him so is that an accusation because that sounds like libel to me can we deal with one more thing because I don't think we're going to get to the bottom of this about libel libel? okay yeah he smears people Dennis Prager Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity oh really those are the three names he used about racist right wing talk radio show I didn't call them Again, racist I did not, not call them racist I said they have oh uh, no you're only uh, right of course Check I love case. how you, you claim to be a libertarian right. and all you can do is defend conservatives I am a libertarian. you're not a libertarian I believe, you I am never a libertarian. have never I mean, will be a libertarian I don't also <laughs> also Mark I don't think this guy is real I think he's I think this is a Prank, an ongoing prank call. <laughs> is, I do not think he's this a dedicated is a real person. One. I do not think this is a real person. He's a dedicated pranker. I, I, I think I heard him laugh once a few a few weeks ago. I think he broke character momentarily. I, you know, I, I can't say, but um, you know, if, if, if you want to call in and stay in character, then I suppose that's what you can do at 855-450 free free talk live. Want to know the secret to success, kid? One thing: the Granger catalog. And Granger.com. Okay, that's two things. Oh, and Granger's got mobile apps. Those sure are convenient. Three things to succeed. Hey, and 1 800 Granger. I know that number by heart. Four things. There's hundreds of branches, too. Like I said, the one secret to keep this place running smoothly is Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call, click Granger.com, or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Lumber Liquidator's low flooring prices just got even lower with the Buy More, Save More sale on now. Save $100, $300, even $500. The more you buy, the more you save on over 300 varieties of laminate, hardwood, and more. Save on striking and durable bamboo, including easy-to-install solid-click strand bamboo for just $219 a square foot. That's 37% less than other flooring stores. Go to LumberLiquidators.com to find the store nearest you. Plus, get special 15-month financing. But hurry, this sale ends June 17th. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.25 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,263 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $643. 
Antiwar.com reports, and a development that is going to shake the Republican establishment to its foundation, Republican House Majority Leader Eric Cantor has been defeated, with just over 60% of the vote reporting David A. Bratt, a professor of economics and a trenchant critic of the NSA's spying on American citizens, is clobbering the pro-NSA Cantor. Bratt started out with $50,000 of his own money to launch what many viewed as a chaotic campaign against a well-funded and well-entrenched opponent. At the starting bell, Cantor had over a million and a half dollars in his campaign war chest. Bratt is an incisive critic of the surveillance state. On his campaign website, he went after Cantor for voting for the NDAA and against Justin Amash's legislation that would have reigned in the NSA. As the Bratt campaign put it, Dave believes the Constitution does not need to be compromised for matters of national security. He supports the end of bulk phone and email data collection by the NSA, IRS, and any other branch of government. Not only that, but Bratt went after Cantor for voting for the National Defense Authorization Act on the grounds that it authorizes the unconstitutional bulk collection by the government under the PRISM program. He also savaged Cantor for voting against Representative Justin Amash's amendment to the act, which would have stopped bulk collection dead in its tracks. Now watch the bipartisan Washington establishment go into shock and try to attribute their shocking defeat to low turnout. There's already talk that it's about the immigration issue, but this underplays, perhaps deliberately, Bratt's explicit identification with libertarianism in his interview with Breitbart. Interestingly, the Breitbart piece cites the Cantor campaign as claiming Bratt supports excluding active duty personnel from voting in Republican nomination contest slyly implying he's insufficiently supportive of the military and perhaps possibly one of those peaceniks that tried and true neocon ploy obviously did not work fpp radio news is brought to you by roberts and roberts brokerage for over 35 years roberts and roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals they now take bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment call roberts and roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing 800-874-9760 Forbes reports, California-based Aerovironment announced yesterday that they've partnered with BP Exploration Incorporated to use drones to monitor BP's Prudhoe Bay oil field. The five-year contract marks the first time drones will be performing routine commercial service over land in compliance with FAA regulations. Aerovironment will use their Puma AE drone, a small hand-launched system with three and a half hours of flight time. The Puma can be outfitted with different sensors, ranging from electro-optical and infrared sensors to custom LiDAR. Tim Conver, Aerovironment Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, said thanks to the FAA's rigorous safety-focused certification process for drones, BP and Aerovironment have launched a safer, better, and more cost-effective solution for managing critical infrastructure and resources. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. The AP reports... Israel's parliament on Tuesday chose Reuven Rivlin, a veteran nationalist politician and supporter of the Jewish settlement movement, as the country's next president, putting a man opposed to the creation of a Palestinian state into the ceremonial but influential post. Rivlin, a stalwart in the governing Likud party, now faces the difficult task of succeeding Shimon Perez, a Nobel laureate who became an all-star on the international stage. While the presidency is largely ceremonial, Rivlin's political views could be a liability when he represents the country overseas. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com.
This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, mothers across the nation invented a new drug to worry about, confirming that the completely fictitious new substance was appearing in schoolyards across the nation and is easily created from simple household products like sugar, window cleaner, and petroleum jelly. Calling the totally made-up narcotic scramp, mothers in desperate need of something to fret over deluded themselves into constantly agonizing over the widespread drug epidemic that exists solely in their minds. My son sits in his room for hours and hours. It must be scram. He's a scram pet. I bet they'll figure out how to scram with this too. In other news, a man confidently strides through a beaded curtain without parting it. A father takes a picture of his daughter every day from birth until he abandons his family. And the same homeless man is always begging for change on the same United flight. Stalled contract negotiations have prevented me from reviewing any more news until I receive a co-producer credit. But for more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. Live, 855-450-3733, or lrn.fm on Skype. It's uh, this live edition of Free Talk Live is with uh, Mark. And Brett. You can give us a call again at 855-450-FREE. That's the letters F-R-E-E. And Brett, in the last hour, we were talking about a uh, deranged lunatic that was apparently twirling a pencil in, or a pen in, uh, in some class in, in school and got suspended for it. Yes, absolutely. And we were just hearing from the uh, assistant or interim superintendent talking about how this type of behavior is a, a cause for alarm. And uh, the story moves The behavior on. is... That he was a, 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 yeah. Well, he was accused of uh, wielding his finger as if it were a gun, you know, doing the little, um, you know, bang, bang gun thing. Sure. The, uh, the actual, uh, according to Ethan, the student who is in hot water for this, uh, somebody in the class, uh, maybe in a bullying way, maybe in a uh, partially joking way, said, he's making gun motions. Send him to juvie. So yeah. uh, that was how uh, the school authorities uh, got involved. He was taken out of class. And uh, I'll, I'll catch us up to uh, the story uh, at about midpoint here. Ethan was back in class quickly. Too often these zero-tolerance cases have second- and third-order effects, unfortunately. In Ethan's case, long after they thought the incident was resolved, his dad received some very scary paperwork from the state of New Jersey, threatening to revoke his custody rights. Ethan's father, named Michael, received startling communication from New Jersey's Department of Child Protection and Permanency and Department of Children and Families. Quote, I received a letter from them saying they had found an incident of abuse or neglect regarding Ethan because I had refused to take him for psychological evaluation, Michael mm. said. You know, this is one of the reasons why I choose not to send my son to government school, mm -hmm. um, because I, these people petrify me. Here you have a father who uh, was going to, didn't feel that his son making either A, twirling a pencil, or B, possibly making some kind of gun motion with his finger, was somehow um, indicated that he was a deranged lunatic, so he refused to send his son to a psyche eval, which he would probably have to pay for. And the school is now uh, trying to, you know, work with the DA, uh, the kids services thing, mm -hmm. and uh, have his custody revoked. If you don't send your kid there, you probably won't have that problem. Is what my thought process has been all along, and uh, that's the reason, you know, that we didn't uh, in my my home. Um, you know, what we've done sort of along the way is we've done this, uh, this what we call family directed learning. Mm -hmm. uh, it's I brought, I got it from the child directed learning, which is another terminology for unschooling. Yeah. But I knew that I would never sort of be able to let go <laughs> yeah. um, all the way. And what my son has done up to this point is, you know, he loves uh, stars and, um, you know, looking at the, the solar system and the, the universe and that kind of thing. And then he was into, you know, Legos and he's been into some different things, but Recently, I've got to say, Brett, I'm having a little difficulty with this unschooling You're having thing. Second thoughts. It's um, 
He's what he wants to do now is to watch YouTube videos um, all the time, mm-hmm. and they're not, like when he wants to when he's watching YouTube videos about the relative size of say the Earth to uh, you know the star Beetlejuice things like that. Yeah, does my father heart proud? I'm fine with it. Sure, but when he wants to watch things like um, I. <sighs> When I was listening to him watch this one thing, I, I just realized how inane what I do for a living is. Um, it's a guy who essentially runs a talk show while he does a, uh, plays a video game. Mm-hmm. And his name is Blitzwinger, I guess. And I, I don't know what the name of his channel is on YouTube. Sorry about that, Blitzwinger. Um, I'm sure people can look it up if they want to. But he plays video games and then talks about it as he uh, as he does it. And, and I... I I don't know how anybody can watch this for more than a minute. It's just boring, you know? Yeah. yeah. But, um, uh, you know, for whatever reason, Jack likes to watch it. It's probably because he doesn't hasn't gotten to, um, uh, to play too many video games. And, you know, he's interested in video games. But... Uh, you know, that's that, that's the thing. And I, I'm really having a difficult time with him watching them. Well, I've got plenty to say about this uh, in a minute, if you are or, or, or right now. I'm sorry. I thought we had a phone call. Um, well, so you're frustrated, right? But you're not you're not ready to give him the don't twirl your pencil lecture and send him off to public school. Right. Well, he's not going to public school at all. <laughs> OK, but um, so but but the way this Waldorf is, school is a possibility. <laughs> sure, sure. So you're looking for something where there's a little more structure. First of all, I'll defend all those people who make uh, videos of themselves playing video games. I think it's all in the personality of the person doing it and how entertaining they can be. It must be. Yeah, I'm sure some of it can be be dreadful. Um, But how – so let's get some more information. How long has he been doing this for? How long has he been hooked into this – what did you say the guy's name was again? Blitzwinger. Blitzwinger. He's gotten now three promos on the uh, the show. (laughs) All right. (laughs) Three weeks. About that, yeah. And how long each day? Well, he would do it all day, it seems, if he could, but we've put sort of it, – it, it, it enrages me that my son wants to uh, – enrage is probably pushing it. It, it, it irks me that my uh, son wants to stay indoors on beautiful days here in New Hampshire. I want him to go outside and get some sunshine, for God's sake, mm-hmm. um, in, instead of staying indoors. And, you know, so we put these sort of rules down that no, no watching – after ten or before six, mm-hmm. so those are those are the the watch hours. Is you can't watch between ten a.m. and six p.m. Okay, so he has to be doing something else. Yeah. And it, by the way, we moved it from four to five simply because you know, four to five to f- five to six because of you know just his propensity to watch. And and then you can't get on the computer, right? Like you know, then it's it's his time to be on there. If if, if he's allowed to be on the computer, then you can't get on essentially. All right. So I'm wondering what the cost would be. Of just letting him, you know, get this phase out of his system. How long will? It, and I mean, I would, I would, so I would look at, I would look at this YouTube channel. How many videos does this guy have? Oh, a lot <laughs> of them. He's got, and he gets hundreds. Uh, you know, I, I, I looked. I had one hundred and thirty thousand views. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. A free talk live. I mean, <laughs> I can cuss Ian out and get three thousand views. Um, and and other than that, we don't get much. You know, our YouTube, our YouTube channel's uh, new, and it's frankly quite boring to watch a three-hour video of people sitting here. Yeah, yeah. So how? Hmm. It's it's tough because. What was he interested in before this? Is he interested in video games? Legos before that. Yeah, he wants to play video games. There's no doubt about it. Okay. So, I mean, that might just be the next phase, you know? I mean, what are you, what are you worried about? Well, here's what I'm worried about. Young people um, in my world, and, and I believe my son, aren't very good at figuring out what's good for them mm-hmm. versus what's bad for them. So if my son had the opportunity to eat um, potato chips, uh, candy bars, and uh, whatever sort of, you know, he's not, he's not going to ask for pork chops and asparagus. Mm-hmm. And... You know, he's got a. I mean, there are rules at the house, and the rules are you got to eat real food. Um, and I also think that given entertainment preferences, because that's all it really is, is that's all we're doing is entertaining ourselves through life. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, uh, we, we start uh, life, we get to the point where we can entertain ourselves, we entertain ourselves, at some point we procreate, and then we entertain ourselves till our death, right? It's all about entertainment. And I'm afraid that he'll, you know, take the vapid entertainment over the, uh, the good entertainment, and that's what my concern is. Okay. Can he read? Yes, quite well. Uh, Surprisingly some- well. 
some basic uh, math skills? We're trying. Um, you know, we it, he knows what a nickel dime quarter is. Um, are he knows what dollars are. We're some day, some days he can tell you what they add up to, and other days, no, he can't. What's his uh, writing like? Oh, I mean, he's six years old. Yeah. His uh, his writing looks probably like a six year old's. He you know wants to write. He writes things like he yeah. sign his name and um, he'll write the names of the planets and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So it sounds like he has more than twenty five percent of all the schools that uh, skills that he's going to get in six years of elementary school. Yes. Right? So but he's a genius, and I hate the idea that it's wasted on watching people play video games on but youtube maybe, but see maybe for a genius there's an opportunity in that and we, and you don't know what it is and i can't think of what it is but it's it's something he has this momentum this enthusiasm right now for this so there's this question of how to harness it i want to know how many hours a day i'm supposed to allow this to go on 855-450-3733 Travel in bubbles, fly at hyperspeed With brain implants and artificial gravity A scientific genius and his clever assistant Set out on an adventure through the solar system On a secret mission to find the key To access new frontiers and save liberty QuantumVibe.com From Big Head Press The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. We're being attacked by news from all sides in tonight's News Blitz. Now we're homing in on Houston, Texas, where NASA announced today that the crew of the International Space Station has successfully completed their 13-year mission studying man's ability to constantly repair a large object in space. NASA officials hailed the remarkable feat of maintenance at a press conference this afternoon. And throughout human history, man has gazed at the stars and dreamed of fixing something up there. People once thought the ultimate feat in human repair was a really big boat. Today, we've accomplished so much more. This comes in the wake of NASA's previous success, finding out how many times an astronaut could hold something in his hand, then let it go, watch it float in front of his face for a bit, then catch it again. All right, dust yourself off. You have survived the news blitz. (laughs) Tune in tomorrow morning to Today Now. We'll look back at Jim's week as a polygamist. Oh, it's going to be fun. (laughs) (laughs) This is the Onion News Network. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 
877-357-9938. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. You can give us a call. We're live here, 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time on Free Talk Live. It's Mark. Brett. And Ian. Ian's back in the studio, taking over the first chair, making it so I don't actually have to work anymore. Okay, but you do need to work because, uh, like a lot of listeners just tuning in, I don't really know what you guys have been talking about. I've been at a city council meeting for the last hour, two hours, some two hours, two two plus hours, where people were talking about banning chalking. Um, well, uh, what we you know what we started with was a story that Brett brought in about a young man who was apparently doing one of two things: either a twirling a pencil in class between his fingers, a la Iceman on uh, on Top Gun. Guess I'm dating myself. No, that was a that was a nice reference. Thank you. Well hmm. done. Or he was making finger gestures, uh, like uh, not like gun finger motions, at uh, a student, another student. A student says something, and, and this is what it says to me that he's probably, the young man's telling the truth and he was spinning a, a pencil. Is, is uh, He's making gun motions, put right. him in juvie. Yep. The put him in juvie part kind of indicates to me that whoever's saying this is an a-hole, or yeah. was acting like an a-hole at that moment And who in was time. saying that? Uh, a peer. Somebody, so this kid peer. was another th- student, middle schooler, 13 years old, twirling this pencil in class. And mm-hmm. this kid, I, it says like either to bully him or half jokingly says he's making gun motions because that's just part of a public school now. You know, that motions and gun sounds. Kids is, are aware of zero tolerance. They're very aware of zero tolerance. And not only can teachers use it to bully students, but they can use it apparently to bully each other. And then, you know, between phone calls that came in, and by the way, Ian, I have not kept any uh, show notes, and I'm sorry for that. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> but between phone calls that came in, uh, we were talking about this, and I basically derailed the conversation by pointing out that, you know, this is the reason I didn't put my son in school, is um, the father of this child has received notification from, you know, their version of, uh, um, you know, health and human services or whatever, the, the kid the kid police, saying that, you uh, you know, his custody is basically in question because he didn't send his son for a psychological evaluation for threatening the class as the school had wanted him to do. He probably would have had to pay for that, too, and it probably wasn't going to be cheap. And I'm like, this is the reason I don't send my kid to school. And then I was talking about how we do unschooling at my home, what I call family-directed learning, and the, uh, you know, extolling the high points and lamenting the low points, Brett was sort of coaching me through one of these low points we're having with Jack is is that he's watching these videos on YouTube that I don't like. Like what? They are specifically this uh, this video of here's plug number four of this guy <laughs> named Blitzwinger who does uh, who plays video games and mm. then people watch him. He does a talk show, which mind you, it's hilarious that Daddy doesn't like his son uh-huh. <laughs> watching a talk show when he does a talk show. I, it's a talk I, show about video games? No, it's no. a talk show of a man playing video games. Okay. He'll like go, whoa, where did that monster come from? Uh-huh. Oh, awesome sauce. Like he has these little sort of... Uh, catchphrases? Uh, catchphrases mm-hmm. that he uses. And I must say that the dude is not uninteresting Mm. as an individual he knows like five languages apparently but you know i'd much rather hear him talking about other things and it's this him playing video games i just find remarkably uninteresting and i I just what do you think that jack likes about it jack is your six-year-old son he's uh you know is he enjoying the video game graphics or is he interested in the catchphrases or both um i think something else i think it's all of that but i think that he he imagines himself playing the video games. Mm-hmm. So he can play video games with some level of success by not playing video games, if that makes sense. Uh huh. Yep. And I haven't said, well, I mean, because recently he's been, he has a whole bunch of videos of him playing different video games, but uh, recently he's watching the Minecraft ones. I haven't said, well, let's go to Minecraft.com and get you an account so we can get you set up, buddy. Because 
you know, I'm just not going to do that. If he wants to figure that out on his own, I suppose he can. Hmm. I'll be a little proud until, you know, for the first day, I'll be proud that he went and figured out how to set up an account on uh, Minecraft. But after that, I'll be like, oh, God, how long are we going to play this? And so we've set up hours that he can play before 10 a.m. and after 6 p.m. Play the videos? Play the, watch the videos. Okay. And, and I think there's an opportunity here, but I don't know what it is yet. So An opportunity for? For uh, right now, there's this momentum of enthusiasm that Jack has for this, right? So Absolutely. what I think most of, because learning is just living, right? There's a way to ride this into some kind of opportunity, hopefully. You know, I'm sure there are things that kids do that are just completely a waste of time that have no opportunities in them at all. And and that, I think that's fine once Isn't in a while. Isn't that what video games are? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I And I think that having downtime like that is fine. Sure. So I ask it's questions leisure. like, how long has this been going on for? Mark said about three weeks. About three weeks. How yeah. many hours a day does he want to do this? How many videos does this guy have? If he only has 65 videos, might as well just ride it out. You know, if he has 2,000 videos, then, yeah. okay, maybe we need a contingency plan. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So uh, You watch the same stuff over. <laughs> oh, that's the thing that kids do, don't they? They really do. And this is one of the things about sort of the um, uh, the, the unschooling thing is that, that, that gets me is, is that, God, do we have to watch this again and talk about it again? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's mind-numbing. So wait, um, the talking about it thing, is this supposed to be curriculum and as far as his unschooling is concerned? why? What the hell's curriculum if he just when wants you're to unschooling? Watch a video. Life is curriculum when you unschool. Yeah. So this is just part of, this is just part of Jack's process. This so, is, and, and, and I'm not saying, I'm not p putting any judgment on this or even talking about it uh, supportively. Well, Chernobyl says he has the answer to what okay. I'm not sure, but he's on the line on Skype. Chernobyl, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello. Good evening. Hey, you're uh, on here. Okay. I am going to date myself as well, and I remember I used to get PC Gamer back in 1998, and an article came out about System Shock 2. It got 96%, if I recall correctly. So what I suggest is you get your son like a Pentium 3 with like a Voodoo 5 5500 like AGP video card, no connection to the internet. You hook him up with Half Life. You give him System Shock 2. You give him StarCraft 1. And maybe get another computer so you can play your son at StarCraft, okay? Because then you know, like, no matter what, at the end of the day, he's going to be having an enlightening, amazing experience. It's like showing your kid The Godfather or The Road Warrior. Like, <laughs> you got to wait till it's age appropriate. But those games are so old and so. But why go? I mean, those, those games scary. aren't old enough, in my opinion. Why not go? I mean, what I've seen, I don't know where you get them, but I know they exist. Old Atari games, like Atari 2600, old school Atari, they've put onto essentially just like a controller that has uh, TV connectors on it, and essentially you've got an Atari emulator in a gamepad that you can hook up to a television set, so you can bring this thing anywhere you want to. Hook them up with some old school games like Atari, and then you can play with them in that way, and it's not as complicated as having to put together a network of old computers that may or may not be running correctly. You get one of these things, you get a control pad, you get another one, you, before you know it, you're playing uh, When does tank. the kid go outside? Take, outside? He can take this outside with him. There's some, some way <laughs> that you can bring this thing outside. <laughs> well, I mean, video games, it, it sounds like you're dealing with video games as a parent who plays video games. And I don't know if you have more comments. You're welcome to stick around for them here in a moment. Chernobyl, 855, 450 free. I guess the question is kind of, well, how does a parent handle a son or daughter's interest in playing video games? I mean, every parent wants to get their kids outside. So this is a challenge, it seems. It's Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know spring is the time to stock up at HerbalHealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hoodia and Metabolic Complex, and Pro Metabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex, plus Stevia Liquid Sweetener and the Super Enzymes, all on sale for spring at HerbalHealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. 
Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and click on Spring Specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. A meme is not easy to define. What is it? But you know it when you see it. Amazing. Don't Tread on Meme.com proves that. I feel so enlightened. Don't Tread on Meme, M-E-M-E. Helping you give the finger to our monetary system of deception by providing you with silver dime trading cards. Unlike today's dollar, they have value. And they look neat, too. Oh, would you look at those? Aren't those just swell? Don't tread on meme.com. While you're browsing their numerous silver dime card designs, take time to download the easy-to-use silver calculator app. This simple piece of technology lets you know instantly, whether using iPhone or Android, just how much your silver coin is worth. Find out all the details at don'ttreadonmeme.com. Now accepting Bitcoin. Don't tread on meme. Your path to a voluntary society with honest money. Don't tread on meme.com, serving you faster than the Fed prints money. You're listening to the best liberty oriented audio streamed around the clock on the air and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything that you want by dialing toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us via Skype, our Skype username, for you to uh, get on the show and talk about anything you want. This username is lrn.fm. If you care about online privacy, you need to know about ProXPN. It's a global virtual private network that encrypts your online data meaning that everything you enter into your web browser, every website you visit, all the search terms that you might be using, those are being recorded right now likely by your internet service provider. You can stop that from happening by getting ProXPN. They then encrypt your data connection. So nobody who uh, is working at your ISP will have any idea what you're doing, or maybe at your you know, local coffee shop, the system administrator won't be able to snoop on you. Anybody who's trying to sniff out your Wi-Fi packets, they will also have no clue because you are encrypted thanks to ProXPN. So if you want to get started, you can do it for free at ProXPN.com FTL. When you're ready to upgrade to their premium account, though, it's only 5 bucks a month using our discount code. 
The code is FTL20, and it gets you 20% off the price of their premium account for the lifetime of the account. If you buy their annual plan, that's how you get the price down to $5 per month. With the premium account, you get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world to which you can connect, the ability to privately torrent, plus you can get past regionally blocked websites. You get it all with a risk-free 7-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN does not keep records of your online surfing habits. So go and learn more. Get signed up. And download their software, by the way. It's available for Windows, Mac, iOS, as well as Android devices. There's a way for Linux users to get set up. Involves a little bit more, but it's not too complicated. ProXPN.com slash FTL code FTL20. As we continue here, we've got Chernobyl on the line. Mark has encountered the, the inevitable problem of being a parent in the 21st century, and that is... Kids are going to want to play video games. The siren's call of the digital boxes. Now, to some extent, Mark, uh, <laughs> you may be guilty of uh, of sort of fomenting this desire as you are a video gamer. You're in your early 40s, and you have a PlayStation 3. Prior to that, you've had a Xbox two or and something. and 1. I still have a PlayStation 2 also, so, and I probably could locate my PlayStation 1 somewhere. Along so it's likely that as he was growing up, your son Jack has probably encountered you playing video games on more than one occasion. Yep, sometimes we play together. Oh, I learned it by watching you. Yes. <laughs> and now Dad is frustrated because he maybe He doesn't he's... seem to have the um, ability to differentiate between... Like, well, he, why should he know when it's time to play and when not to play, right? Like, you know, in his world, playing is what he's done all up all up to this point. Even when he's learning things, he's playing. When we're learning how to read, we're playing because we're reading comic books mm -hmm. and we take turns. If he doesn't know a word, he asks and I tell him. And, you know, he doesn't have any idea that it's, it's work. So Chernobyl was on the line. His solution oh. was to get some old... PCs and network them together and play old PC games. I said that's too complicated for Mark. I know it's too complicated for Mark. He wouldn't be able to handle it. Um, but, uh, you know, get an old Atari 2600 or one of these new emulators for it and plug that into a TV set and go to town. But I don't know if that solves the problem with you know, when it's time to end this, when, when it's time to go outside or go have some dinner or read a book or something like that. Chernobyl, any other comments you want to share? I cannot more highly suggest watching Charlie Brooker's How Video Games Saved the World. It was a special on BBC. You can find it on the Pirate Bay. This is screen, the screen swipe guy? Exactly. Yes, point, very good. The point that he makes is that uh, not all video games are created equal, but it, it's an experience. It's not a passive thing like watching TV. And if I found the perfect way to sum up what I was trying to communicate and that uh, if your son Jack you blew up his construction yard in Command and Conquer Red Alert five times a day for six months. And then one day, one day, he blows up your construction yard. How proud would you be? You're like, my son! Oh, my God. He, uh. Thanks for the call, Chernobyl. I appreciate it. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. We go to Jimmy in Arizona. You're on Free Talk Live, Jimmy. Hey, how are y'all doing? Jimmy, what's on your mind tonight, sir? Hi, man. You know, uh, me and uh, James Witt from Arizona, we was riding our matching Segway down to the bar to go watch a, a Miley Cyrus cover band. <laughs> and we were talking about uh, uh, moving to New Hampshire. But, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, for that but free, free State Project. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, here's my thing is y'all always talk about Getting kids out of schools, you know, public schools are bad. But yeah. the, my problem is, here's my problem, man, and Brett, maybe you can answer this, because you seem like a kind of a smart guy. Kind of. Uh, we're, we're probably pretty close. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, obviously. I, I, similar, you know. So uh, this is the thing, is, is if y'all keep taking the kids out of public school, my son, uh, Jar Jar Jr., he's not going to have anybody to pick on. That just upsets me. It worries me. He's not going to have anybody to do what? To pick on. To pick on? Now, wait a minute. If he's your son, why is his name Jar Jar Jr.? <laughs> I, 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 explain yourself. Hey, it, <laughs> explain myself. Look, God works in mysterious ways. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay. Sure. That's a good explanation. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. How does the whole senior junior thing work? Can there be a break in generations? Could his dad be Jar Jar Senior and his son be Jar Jar Junior? No. 
No, oh. you can't, can't skip a generation. That baldness can skip a generation. Junior can't. <laughs> well, uh, true. That's true. Um, but I'm changing things up. You know, I'm an innovator. That's what we like here on Free Talk Live. Uh, innovation. So what else did you want to share tonight? Well, uh, well, you know what? Uh, I do got something else to share. Uh, well, I mean, I guess y'all aren't going to address the bully thing, but that's cool. Um, so Wait, me and the bully thing, you know, like what am I supposed to do? My son, you know, who's he going to pick on? Oh. You know, he's going to be upset. How old is your son? Oh, he's only uh, four, turned five real soon. Uh, well, you could have him try uh, picking on adults. That would be kind of adorable. <laughs> right, man, you, you're a thinker. I like that about you. Thank you. Uh, well, you're welcome. Uh, so me and Jimmy, we were thinking about, uh, well, he was thinking about, and I, I fully support him because uh, he's also an innovator, a very deep thinker. Mm-hmm. Uh, he wants to start some kind of museum uh, for the what is it what's that the hiroshima you know to celebrate all the death of those evil japanese children they <laughs> had to die jimmy uh, thanks for the call was, tonight what a way what a downer uh way to end the call thanks appreciate hearing from you the toll-free <laughs> number is 855-450-FREE that's 855-450-3733 i think he was referring to uh, the other caller from arizona one of one of our other callers who has called and has um basically cheerleaded the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And oh, boy. Now the next calls for the next two weeks are going to be about uh, Ian saying that he cheerleaded and he didn't cheerlead. <laughs> it's horrible and uh, just completely unnecessary loss of life. But moving on. Toll-free number, 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Sarah in Chicago. You're on Free Talk Live. Hi, Sarah. Hi. How are you? Hey, what's on your mind tonight? Um, I'm an unschooling mom. Oh, great. And I wanted to talk to you about the gaming issue. Sure. How old are your watching, kids? Watching. I have a 10-year-old and a four, soon to be 14-year-old. Have you been unschooling a... the whole time, or did you just start last year? No. <laughs> I've been, we've been unschooling for, this is our fifth year. Okay. We'll be starting. All right, fifth yeah. year, great. I have a six-year-old nephew who's unschooling. He's been unschooling his whole life. Okay. Um, so I know that my kids and my nephew really, they're really, in, they were into Minecraft. Different children have been more into it at different times, but they loved watching the YouTube videos because it's basically a walkthrough, and they learn skills like problem solving because they're watching how somebody else solved a problem that they haven't solved yet. Okay. I think that might um, be good, actually. I think that's a good point, that maybe what Jack is doing is like a running start for him to see. Because, I mean, when you see something done like that, that would be uh, really helpful. Stand by, he, he Sarah. Talks, yeah. uh, he talks okay. about it as though it's his video, him playing the video game. Sometimes he's talking oh, yeah. about the, I did this in the first person. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Sarah, if you can hang on, I'd like to continue sure. the conversation with you here. Sarah's an unschooling mom, and she's dealt with this issue that Mark is just now beginning to deal with of uh, sons and daughters interested in playing video games, maybe playing too much. It's Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. 
Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to UnseenNow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. UnseenNow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at UnseenNow.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial in toll-free. If you want to comment on the topic at hand, you're certainly welcome to do so or completely change the direction of the show. It is up to you. With you tonight, it's Ian, Brett, and Mark. The topic at hand is video games and your children. And at what point, you know, are they getting into them and are they getting too far in? Are they, you know, losing all connection with reality? Is it hard to get them to go outside? And Mark is just beginning to enter this realm with his six-year-old son, Mark. Uh, not Mark, Jack. Mark is sitting across from me. Um, but we'll continue here. We've got an unschooling mom on the phone to share her thoughts. Your thoughts are welcome at 855 450 free. Coming up in July, the 19th and 20th, Free Talk Live, Mark and myself will be at Chicago's McCormick Place South Building for the North American Bitcoin Conference. The first one, as I understand it, in the Midwest ever. So if you are into Bitcoins or just curious about Bitcoins, this is going to be the place to go to learn more and you know learn more of the basics, learn more of the detailed stuff. Lots of great speakers who really know what they're talking about. Uh, Roger Veer, a.k.a. Bitcoin Jesus, Tony Gallippi from BitPay, Vitalik Buterin from Ethereum, Jeffrey Tucker, a liberty-oriented favorite uh, from Liberty.me, and many others. You can go to btcchicago.com to learn more about the event. Again, July 19th and 20th in Chicago. We will look forward to seeing you there. Free Talk Live intending to broadcast live from the event on both nights. And of course, you can pay for your tickets in Bitcoin at btcchicago.com. We've got Sarah back on the line in Chicago, actually. And Sarah, you... Yeah, I want to go there. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll look forward to hopefully seeing you there. Now, you were saying you're an unschooling mom. You haven't unschooled for the entirety of the time that your kids have been in school. Uh, in school five years is pretty good but that's a good good run when did your kids start to get interested in video games you said you have a 10 and 14 year old was it both male 
girls? Mm-hmm. Both boys? No, I have a 10 year old daughter and okay. a 14 year old son. So and when an 18 year old daughter. When did she's you, not into video games. When did you first encounter this and with which children <laughs> did you encounter it? Um, my son was definitely into the like Xbox platform video games uh, before he left school. Um, but Minecraft specifically and on the computer really began when we began unschooling. Uh, there were a few unschooling children that we knew of that were playing Minecraft, so I actually introduced it to him. Mm-hmm. I um, downloaded it and got it working on the computer, and they were off. So this, I guess what my issue is and is not what Jack does on the computer, what he chooses to mm-hmm. watch, although I find these uh, videos to be inane. I'm sure that I'm going to find the music that he chooses to be reprehensible, <laughs> too. Um, but, you know, right. that's beside the point. That's obvi- That's just, you know, a generational difference. What bothers me, and I, 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 I know I'm, you know, I've sat many uh, an adult Saturday away indoors when I should have been outside playing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> playing video yeah. games. Games. But that's what I hate yeah. is, is that his ability to focus over long periods of time on things that I I would prefer him not focus on. Yeah. Um, I think you have conversations with him about it. How does it make you feel when you lose the whole afternoon? I, and, and maybe at six, he's not going to grasp that. But I've certainly had those conversations with my 14-year-old. I've had them with myself, you know. And yeah. I think the outdoor thing you have to have something really interesting outside too. You know, have maybe not always. I mean, you live in New Hampshire, right? <laughs> Pretty amazing outside there, but Well, I, I don't um, think that he's not as interested in the trees, but we have a big pile of dirt and a big pile of wood chips. He's also got like a really awesome play thing out there. Like Yeah, the he's structure. got a big playhouse thing, but uh, he doesn't you know, he doesn't have any interest in it unless other really? kids come over and play in it. Uh, yeah. Well, so you have to yeah, you're gonna have to probably facilitate that kind of thing. Um, but my kids are always interested to go do things when we have something planned with other kids outdoors, for sure. Yeah, a yeah. beach day or a park day. They want to do that, especially when they've had limited access to what they wanted to do online with so, the videos. So this kind of um, speaks he, to something, Sarah, that I've I've said a bunch, and I think Mark and I have even had this conversation before about being proactive, right? And you don't want to, mm-hmm. when you have an unschooling environment, you don't want to feel like you're controlling your children, but you do control the environment to a certain right. extent, um, what is inside and what is outside. And I... I know that, yes, obviously we want kids to discover computers and then Pandora's box kind of gets opened maybe, and that's a difficult situation. I just want him to spend his time on Wikipedia. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, those gamer kids, those, those, those kids making those videos, they're smart. Oh, yeah. (laughs) And there's a lot of them. Yes. So the frustration. Some of them, I mean, I'm sure there's some that aren't, but the really good ones. um, I mean, my son's learning vocabulary. He's asking me what things mean, looking things up. Um, well, I was know, really happy that my son wanted. What's frag mean? <laughs> frag. He wanted to know. Um, he wanted to make a, uh, a. I can't remember what it's called, but like basically an unboxing video or whatever. Mm-hmm. Not an yep. unboxing uh-huh. video, but to like he put yeah, together. He made he his own Lego structure, and when people will buy the Lego sets, they'll tell you about the features and then take you through it. So he made a um, video. We we made a video together of him talking about the structure that he created, um, and I put it up on the yeah. YouTube channel. And nobody really views my YouTube channel or anything like that, other than uh, you know the parents. But you know he got the the experience of making one of these videos. Right. Sarah, thanks for your feedback and the thoughts thanks, tonight. Sarah. I appreciate hearing from you. And so, basically, Mark, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, misunderstanding this at all. Your frustration is that Jack is unschooling, which basically means he's directing his own learning. I call that it family Jack- directed learning because I'm not really really ready to let go completely. But okay, go ahead. That, but okay, that's where I was kind of going with this. Is the frustration coming from that? You know, you feel like you know what the best thing to do yep. is, like, spend time on Wikipedia, learn things. Yes. Uh, and he's saying the best thing for him to do is to go and watch this, what was the guy's name, Swoop Bomb or something like that? <laughs> it's Blitzwinger. Blitzwinger, okay. That's uh, promo five for Blitzwinger tonight. Right. This Six. guy's <laughs> YouTube channel uh, is what he wants to do, and that's the that's the breakdown, right, is that you want one thing, he wants another thing, and you're frustrated because you 
want to impose your beliefs on him, but at the same time, you don't want to. Well, if I do, then you know what's going to happen, right? I mean, this is his father's son. I mean, the kid is as as, as, uh, rebellious as I am, rebellious and stubborn as I am. If I try to tell him, you can't do that, (laughs) it's going to be on. Um, So... I try to be very careful on Mm. these things, but I'm not excited about it. Why don't you get him a headset? If you like making videos with him, get him his own headset and have him make his own video game talk-along videos. I don't know how they do it. There's probably some software. He doesn't play video games. He's never played a video game? Well, he plays video games with me. We sit there and we play video games together sometimes. Yeah. But he doesn't play on his own. He watches so he, these videos to sort of... Would he be able to do a running commentary of, uh, you know, bing, bang, boom, hey, ouch, don't hurt me, or I'm whatever sure it is could. That people say? That's a great activity. <laughs> that is a, There it is. We found the idea. Maybe. Make Maybe. his own channel, right? Like, make Jack play video games where, kind of channel. Or where you play, and he narrates. And you guys could take turns playing and narrating. And then you could end it. And maybe he would end it with you when you wanted to go do something else. And you have this... Adorable father-son YouTube channel with 100 million subscribers. I don't know what they call the software, but I know it exists because there's a zillion of these play-along videos that you're talking about, or Let's Play, I think, is some of the the titles of these things, where you just watch somebody play a video game, and then there's a narrative track where the person's just talking over top of it. So there must be custom pieces of software that allow for this, you know, probably freeware software, like video game recording software, find out what these things are you can probably just put one on your laptop or whatever and go to town yeah that's probably what i should do all right there you go toll free number tonight 855 450 free we've got jim in madison wisconsin jim you're on free talk live how are you hey what's on your mind tonight jim uh i was just actually calling about the video games uh, for uh, talking about mark there and uh i was going to say minecraft in particular can actually be rather educational in of itself. They have a mod for it called Qcraft, which teaches you uh, basic quantum physics. Jeez, I'm just hoping he can figure out how to make change. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's understandable. But they have other great games as well, like uh, uh, what is the other one? Uh, Kerbal Space Program, which is great. Uh, teaches you about uh, apoapsis, periapsis uh, of uh, orbits, and getting your up into orbit using delta b and wow that's all a, that good stuff sounds really me. confusing yeah that sounds like a little much for a three six-year-old <laughs> <laughs> i i do agree but yeah some of these are a little more advanced but uh, minecraft without the mod pack is rather basic and it does teach you uh problem solving as uh, i think it was sarah had mentioned earlier uh cool. not just watching that and then seeing how they beat the games but by by uh you know, coming to the conclusions themselves while playing the game. Jim, so thanks for the recommendations, games. man. Appreciate hearing from and you tonight. The toll free number is 855 450 free. Hour number three is on the way here this evening, and maybe we'll get a chance to talk about those Venezuelan prostitutes who are now selling dollars instead of sex or and in addition to sex. And also, don't forget to come see Free Talk Live live and in person at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, June 22nd through the 29th. Go to porkfest.com, P O R C F E S T.com to learn more about that. We'll look forward to seeing you there. Hour three next. You take control here. The toll free number is 855 450 free, 855 450 3733. Safety, safety, safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. The first human mission to Mars barely averts disaster when a meteorite strikes the spacecraft, nearly destroying it. Too far from Earth to turn back, the eight-person crew desperately struggle to survive as they ride their crippled ship to the red planet. The future of human spaceflight hangs in the balance. Hugo Award-winning author Ben Bova and NASA scientist Les Johnson craft a thrilling white-knuckle ride with Rescue Mode. Available now at fine booksellers everywhere. 
This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,264. Silver opened at 1927, and Bitcoin is trading at 635.37. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication for all your print and audio duplication needs. Mention promo code Liberty and get 5% off all DVD and CD duplication jobs online at affordablesound.com. Or call them up at 512-459-5253. And support comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. In the news, Tuesday, the San Diego City Council voted unanimously to provide police officers with cameras intended to record their interactions with the public. The San Diego Police Department has been under scrutiny in recent years after receiving multiple citizen complaints of sexual misconduct and racial profiling. The program, costing $4 million a year, will obtain 300 cameras in the upcoming fiscal year and another 400 in the following year. The cameras record a 30-second loop, providing images of what occurred prior to the contact. With the country gripped in crippling strikes and protests, Brazil is preparing for the start of the World Cup Thursday. On Monday, Brazilian police fired tear gas at around 100 striking subway workers before the five-day strike was finally suspended in the evening. The strikes have caused panic over whether tourists will be able to successfully navigate the city and attend the games. Union officials say the decision to resume the strike would depend on whether 42 striking workers who were fired are rehired. The Brazilian government has spent nearly $1 billion on security and will deploy 57,000 troops and 100,000 police officers to stifle protests and further strikes. A report by The Guardian reveals Thailand's seafood industry, which serves both the U.S. and U.K., is linked to slave labor in which workers are being beaten, tortured, and killed. A six-month investigation reveals slaves are forced to work for years without pay under threat of extreme violence in Asia. Large numbers of men are reportedly bought and sold like animals and held against their will on Thai ghost ships in order to facilitate the production of seafood sold to supermarkets around the world. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from The Cory Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central at CoreyMooreShow.com. And support comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. They don't feed the banks by taking credit cards, but you can bet they take Bitcoin. Online at rrbi.co or by phone 800-874-9760. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 11, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. President Obama has declared the recent surge of migrants, many of whom are children from three Central American countries, including Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador, a crisis. The president appointed FEMA last week to lead the government's response. Ports along the South Texas border have become the largest entry point for illegal migrants, with Border Patrol's Rio Grande Valley sector making the most arrests, totaling nearly 150,000 from October of last year to May. Officials say migrants from the regions are more difficult to deport because deportation requires they be sent home on U.S. government-issued flights. Photos of migrant children holed up in detention centers across Texas and Arizona were released to the public last week, exposing their current living conditions, including children sleeping in crowded chain-link cages. Patrol agent in charge Leslie Lawson threatened agents with firing 
after photos were leaked to the media. All personnel working or visiting the detention facility are required to turn off and store their devices in secure lockers. Scientists successfully genetically modified mosquitoes so they only produce sperm, therefore eliminating the female mosquito, the culprit primarily responsible for transferring the malaria parasite. The study published in the journal Nature Communications was successful in creating a fully fertile mosquito strain that produced 95% male offspring, inhibiting the production of female offspring. Researchers say the results are self-sustaining. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, home of one of the first Bitcoin ATMs in the country where you can buy and sell Bitcoin. Visit the ATM at 321 West Ben White Boulevard, number 203. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high fructose corn syrup in anything. Online, CaboBob's.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. A report finds it's not okay to just start talking to people you don't know, and a monstrosity is created in the Frito Laboratory. This is the Onion Week in Review. Local newborn Nathan Jameson surprised the world earlier this morning by irrevocably losing all faith in humanity after just six days. Though he's not yet developed the capacity for speech, spokespeople for the six day old baby have confirmed he already knows that humans cannot be trusted and that most people lack self awareness about their own destructive tendencies. While most people need around 30 or 40 years to truly understand that the vast majority of humanity is shallow and irredeemable, baby Nathan's convinced that he has seen all that he needs to see. People have been nice and even brought him toys and presents, but the fact is, Nathan knows they're all full of shit. And in this week's science report, botanists discover trees are all slowly trying to strangle each other. In other news, a fun-loving turtle is all business when it comes to feeding time, and a party-goer rolls a couple of fat burritos to pass around. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We invite you to bring up anything that you would like. Toll free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. On the site, you can actually join us on the phones at 855-450-FREE and via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. And with you tonight, it's Ian here. Brett. And Mark. All right, so we're going to go right back into your phone calls, and then I'll give, I'll give you a little bit of a recap of what happened tonight in this two-hour-long uh, city council commission meeting. Oh, where, give me some more of that, yeah. Where chalking has been proposed to be banned entirely. No more hopscotch allowed in downtown Keene, New Hampshire, if one city councilor gets his way. And he's, you know, it's the, the process has just begun at this point. Let's go first, though, to Matt in Orlando. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Matt. Hey, guys. How are you doing tonight? Great. Go ahead, sir. Cool. Um, there's a couple of things. I re- realized there was another thing that I wanted to bring up uh, while I was on hold, but it, I'll, I'll start with one thing. If you need to stop me after that, I'll call back another night. All right. I was just recently driving from Tampa to Orlando. Um, I'm sure you guys are familiar with the, with the stretch. Um, yeah, I four stinks. From Florida. There you go. Yeah, it's I-4 indeed. Um, really early in the morning, I was coming back from a friend's place to go to work and um, just cruising through, I think it was Polk County or whatever. Yeah, that's where and you're going the, on I-4 the, almost yeah, the entire pretty, time. Pretty much, yeah. It lasts way too long. But, uh, yeah, and it's, it's you know decent amount of traffic as there always is. And then all of a sudden, I hit a particular stretch, and all of a sudden, there are troopers everywhere. Six, seven uh, state troopers, I don't know where they came from, I mean, from some sort of hiding positions or whatever, but just descending on all of the traffic. It was all going along at, you know, just an, a, a normal speed, a normal clip. Everybody was being sick until these, tra- these uh, troopers just came out of nowhere and disrupted everything. They start pulling people over. There's people pulling over to the left, to the right. And luckily, I didn't get I didn't get nabbed, but I'm, I then have to contend with people who are swerving into the middle lane to avoid people who are pulling over. It was just wow. chaos out of nowhere, and for no for no other reason than to you know catch speeders, you know ostensibly to keep us safe on the road. But it was the most it was the most crystal clear uh, picture that I've ever seen of this sort of like interference 
in his normal everyday life. Right. The- this is a really great example of how police make the road more dangerous. Mm-hmm. They'll tell you that they're out for speeders and speed kills. But, and it, you know, certainly it's more dangerous to be in an accident at 85 miles an hour than it is to be in an accident generally at 65 miles an hour. There's no doubt about that. But you have to sort of weigh the relative consequences when most of the traffic on the road is going 80 miles an hour, and that seems to be the, the speed they want to go. Um, the, the people, the things that are dangerous on the road in those conditions are the people that are going the speed limit, because everybody has to kind of get around them and go around them. And police officers, because when somebody sees them, people slam on their brakes mm-hmm. and they cause a problem. I can tell you as a volunteer firefighter, I've seen two accidents. And this is the rare instance in my town when I show up at a motor vehicle accident. I mean, I haven't been to that. I haven't been to more than a two dozen of them. That I've seen two accidents happen there because of the flashing lights. People see flashing lights. They want to see what's going on. Oh, what's the police officer doing to the bad speeder person? They've caught somebody. I'll keep an eye on them. And bang, they hit somebody. Mm-hmm. You can't, like, if you're if you're going to put, if the Department of Safety is going to put somebody out there to keep them safe, the Department of Safety needs to take responsibility for the fact that those people make the roads unsafe. you got to go around. you got to move a full lane around them in many cases. There's laws protecting them. Officers are swat, uh, swatted every year on the, the roads by um, cars, which just goes to show it's a dangerous uh, situation. Not one of the 10 most dangerous jobs in America, but that's usually what they're dying from is getting mushed on the road. The lights. The lights on their cars I find incredibly distracting and disorienting. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> So, so, do you have any uh, suspicion uh, as to what they were up to? Was it a massive speed trap? Did they have the you know the speed helicopter up there? Because sometimes that's what they'll do. You know, they'll, they get the lines on the pavement and they'll time with a helicopter, uh, or they'll you know hit you with a. This radar was too early in the morning for that. It, no, I mean it must have been a speed trap. I mean, there's no other. It, it wasn't like targeted on a specific vehicle, like it was some sort of drug thing or anything. It was just I didn't see, happen to see a helicopter. To be perfectly honest, I was too busy. Trying to stay alive, mm-hmm. just avoid all of the all of the uh, the cars flying every which way. It was, well, I've uh, certainly seen situations where they'll have, and I think it was down in Florida the last time I saw this, where you'll pass by a cross street and there will literally be twelve police cars down there, and they'll just pull one out after another and just pop every single person going by speeding, and one massive <laughs> revenue hit. How did they? Pull, did they were oh, they yeah. being, pulling people over with cars and flashing lights in this circumstance? Yes. Okay, because I had a situation one time where a police officer was standing on the side of the road and he pointed at me and pointed to the side of the road, and I just drove (laughs) past him. Awesome. (laughs) I just was like, what exactly is this guy going to do? Because I wasn't sure what he was telling me until I was past him. I just, bye. (laughs) You know, then I realized... There's nothing this guy can do. He's he's in, in actually just pointing at the side of the road. <laughs> Matt, anything else you want to share? Uh, yeah, there was one other uh, topic I want to breach. If, All right, if, go if, ahead. If I've got the time. Um, I just recently had a, a couple of friends uh, pass away in a motorcycle accident here yeah. in Orlando, um, and uh, it's some. There's some question as to whether it was due to like pothole, like poor city maintenance over the roads. Or what have you. I mean, I'm not terribly interested. I don't care, particularly care to get into it or even find out for myself. It just happened. But the very, a couple of days after it happened, I was processing it. I happened to stop next to a one of those, you know, bunch, uh, you know, bus bench lawyer signs. Uh, you know, it says if you, you know, if you fall, if it was, you know, it had some sort of you know, motto like you know, you 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 call you know, you you slip, you call us or you know something. You fall, like you that. call. You fall, you call. Thank you. Yeah, that would be it. Uh, and it it sort of it it just. It, it struck me, and I was like, "Who do my friends' families sue?" Now, not that I, and not that I advocate this sort of litigiousness, but if if they were to have slipped in a in a in a Publix in a, in a grocery store or whatever, and broken their you know their toes or something, you sue the you sue the grocery store. But I know that here down, in Keene, New Hampshire, um, an ex girlfriend of mine actually got the city to pay for a, a new tire. Uh, because oh, she'd really? popped a tire while going in, you know, dropping in one of their potholes in their streets, and since that's their responsibility, they actually, I guess, ponied up for the the new tire. I was surprised myself at that, but and yeah, yeah. 
I uh, I tried this once with uh, Salem, Massachusetts, where I used to live, and the, the potholes in Massachusetts are it's like driving. It looks like the surface of the moon everywhere. The interstates, the the local roads, all the. I almost drove into a car sized hole one time <laughs> in Marlboro, Massachusetts. So oh remember God. that and be careful there. Um, but anyway, they, is there a Marlboro in every single state in I New England? So. I How think so. How about a Manchester in every state in New England? Probably. God. I lived in Manchester, Vermont. Anyway. Wait, well, why can't these people come up with new city names? Because they were British. They only had so many places to choose from. <laughs> they can make up their own names. Do they have wives? Yeah. They have people have last names? Smithville. So anyway, I'm in Marlboro, town in Massachusetts with car-sized holes in the road. And, um, oh, well, let's go back to Salem. I'm sorry. So they call me and they say I owe them like $180 for excise tax. And I asked them, what is that? What is that for? I don't know anything about it. No one ever told me I had to pay excise tax if I moved to Salem. They said, oh, you know, it's like a city tax for the roads and stuff, for using the roads. Mm -hmm. I said, you're the people I've been looking for. I drove into a pothole and broke a leaf spring on my truck, you know? So how can we take care of that? And they didn't have any kind of restitution at all. Wow. So, uh, your mileage may vary then well, that, wherever you are. Yeah, that's the other thing too. And um, I lived in Bennington, Vermont, and they installed these side uh, crosswalk extensions, like these paved, heightened areas that came out into the road a little bit. Mm -hmm. And people were driving over them and wrecking their cars. God. And they said, you know, that's um, that's the risk you take uh, for, for driving on the roads. Matt, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. Copblock.org has been embroiled in some controversy as of late. We may be able to talk about that. Your call is certainly welcome here. Venezuelan prostitution, uh, apparently they're changing their business around a little bit, some of them. They're selling dollars now. And they're earning more at that than they are selling sex. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts on police crazy speed traps or whatever happens to be on your mind here on Free Talk Live. Our Skype username, by the way, it's LRN.FM. There's more coming up. The year is 1636, and Commander Eddie Cantrell is on a mission to find oil in the Caribbean. But how will he contend with Spanish governors, hostile natives, and Dutch pirates? 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies, is the latest book in the New York Times, Amazon, and Wall Street Journal best-selling Ring of Fire alternative history series from Bain Books. 1636, Commander Cantrell in the West Indies by Eric Flint and Charles Gannon. Another great book from Bain. Get it now wherever books are sold. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877 9938 Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. 
The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here. And I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you PorcupineRealEstate.com do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll-free. Bring up whatever you'd like. The number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online over at freetalklive.com and get interactive with a variety of different features on our website. All of them are free, freetalklive.com. Bitcoin, it's getting accepted in more and more places. As a matter of fact, I saw some news today that, uh, that Bitcoin is now being accepted by Expedia.com. It's for uh, traveling, right? It's a travel site. Yeah, and some of many of the major websites, eBay is talking like they're going to be accepting Bitcoin here in the near future. I think that the uh, the the, tr the 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 currency train is leaving the station for Bitcoin. They're really going to start rocketing up in value, is my opinion, because once people can use them, once they have uh, value, they're going to have they're going to be in demand. And I predict Bitcoin is going to be sig worth significantly more than it is today, and it's about I think six forty today. If you want to get your hands on some bitcoins, maybe you want maybe maybe you don't care anything about them increasing in value. You just like the idea of a currency that returns the power to the individual rather than to banks and governments. Now that's what I like about uh, bitcoin and that's why I believe it's going to be worth more, but I like both of these aspects. Either way, whatever your preference is, if you want to get some Bitcoin, go to ExpressCoin.com. They're the best choice for buying Bitcoin or Dogecoin. If you've heard of that, it's uh, it's easy, fast, legal, inexpensive. Bitcoin Bit ExpressCoin provides themselves on their customer service, and they're so much so that they've, in fact, uh, invested in the back end of a new website here, ExpressCoin.com, so that they could serve the customers better. It's even more focused to meeting your needs. Get your cryptocurrencies with money order, check, or wire transfer by starting off at ExpressCoin.com. You can even do it from your smartphone by downloading the app at ExpressCoin.com. And they're, they're continuing to grow. They're continuing to add new services. I'm excited about what's going on with ExpressCoin. And I think you will be, too, if you're interested in Bitcoin. ExpressCoin.com. Let's go to Pizza Guy. He's in North Dakota. Pizza Guy, you're on with Ian, Brett, and Mark on Free Talk Live. Go ahead. Hey, how's it going? That's well, really exciting about Bitcoin, by the way. Yep, it sure is. Wow. I uh, Well, because i got to get over to Japan frequently, so now I can pay for those tickets with Bitcoin. That's really cool. Sweet. Excellent. But, so what did you uh, want to share tonight? Yeah, well, <clears throat> okay, so you know about my house and uh, the inside. Um, our listeners now. may not know about your house. It's, uh, it's a, an issue that's been long running for you. You purchased a home that had been... Uh, there were apparently lots of cats living in it, and they had pooped all up in the Impede, ceiling yeah. and between the walls, and it uh, it was just a nightmare of a situation for you to rectify that. Yeah, and um, and it, it was fraudulently sold to me, so it was you know I didn't know about that when I sold when I bought the house, you know, so that's why it was such a big tragedy. The inside's beautiful, so now I'm working on the outside, and I've got two big trees in my front yard. They're not on the boulevard; they're right like right in front of the house. And I want to get rid of them, 
And so that's what I wanted to call about tonight because I am um, – so they're half owned by me and half owned by the city because they're right in front of the sidewalk, so mm-hmm. the city has right away. And so I got to use one of the city's guys. And so I called three guys, got uh, got estimates. Uh, two of them gave me estimates right away. Another guy shows up at my house, and he says, uh, I can't cut these down. And I said, well, why? And he said, well, they're old uh, elm trees, and elm trees uh, are currently there's Dutch elm disease running yeah. around. Uh, I'm right like an now. old elm tree. What is that? I, th- I don't think those existed anywhere. Well, no, there's, there are plenty, uh, especially in my neighborhood here in Fargo. And, um, but, you know, they're, they're right in front of my house. And he says, you know, they're 80 years old and we're losing elm trees. And, you know, I, and so he beseeches me, you know, on an issue of principle and morality to learn to live with those trees. Now, mind you, they're, they're in the front yard, not the whole yard, right? Like they're, they're, I, I'd like to have a front yard, um, you know, because I spent all this time and all this energy um, building the inside of this house. You know, I was just going to buy a $90,000 house so that I'm building equity instead of paying rent. That was the whole idea behind this house. But now it's a little gemstone of mine. It's, it's My whole life is poured into it, and I want to make it mine. And that, that's going to involve removing those trees, which wouldn't have been in the plan if I was going to flip, or not flip, but get out of the house in five years. But I'm going to keep this house forever. And so, um, you know, I guess my question here is to debate the morality of cutting down trees. The word morality it, was used? Uh, he said ethics. I think he said ethics principle. He said he's a tree hugger and <laughs> that he just he couldn't. He couldn't, uh, in good conscience, cut them down, and that he really, really wanted me not to cut them down. Well, personally, so, I'm against front lawns uh, in general, and so I would oppose it based on uh, or oppose having a front lawn in general. But uh, you know, you should be able to do what you want with your property, and if that's cutting down some trees that are undesirable to you, then well, apparently you had two guys say they would do it. Let's so, take this uh, to the to the extreme because I think that that's one of the best ways to figure out what the morality of things and I um, are, and I know that uh, you're not against this, um, there, pizza guy. So if you had the very last best hope sitting in your yard two elm trees of restoring the elm population because you've got to remember i was surprised we call ourselves elm city here in in keen and um you know every street every, every town in new hampshire has an elm street so elms are a no big deal elms. and the elms are gone here there if you find an elm it's young and uh, they just die hmm. so what you've got there is, is in fact, a very, a very sort of special tree. Maybe you could sell it. Um, I don't know how they dig them up. I mean, how, they how have do you... ways of transplanting trees. Depends on how big Giant it is. adult trees? It's true. They do, yeah. Um, it's a 40... Complicated. It's a what, 40-year-old tree? It's 40 foot. It's 80 years old. It's 40 feet. I yeah. mean, it's... So you're talking about a root structure that runs under pavement and yeah yeah you know. I don't think I think Ian's living in a fantasy world if he thinks that you're going to cut you know somehow uh, transplant these trees um, so yeah I mean in that case if you've got the last best hope if you cut your two trees down the species known as northern elms I don't know what the, the actual name of it is but okay. obviously there's more than one type of elm out there the, the you know the species known as elm disappears off the planet. Now, I'm not saying you don't have the right to cut down the tree, but is it right to cut down the tree or the trees? I, I think this, and this is actually kind of where I wanted to go with it, is that, you know, <clears throat> things that are valuable are valuable because they're scarce, right? Scarcity is what creates value. When there's no scarcity, there's no value. That's why air is free, right? But if uh, air all of a sudden became scarce, uh, you'd bet your bottom dollar there'd be a market for it. And I think that that kind of mentality gets into some people's heads, and then they start to believe the thing in reverse, that anything that's scarce is somehow therefore valuable. Mm -hmm. But I see what's – so what? The elm goes extinct. Why? Like, seriously. Seriously. Hey, great story. When you meet somebody, you can say, hey, did you know that I made a species go extinct? (laughs) So. But why not? No, seriously, what, what what's wrong with that? And that, that's really kind of the deeper issue I kind of wanted to go into. Uh, yeah, I'm having trouble finding a counter-argument 
really, honestly. Well, I've got to say that uh, I believe diverse. Here's here's the you know the the diversity is a good thing, right? Like you don't know whether in 20 years they're going to be able to, you know, get the cure for cancer or some terrible disease out of only elms. Mm. And if you're the one responsible, or you're among <laughs> yes, the people who are responsible, I mean, I'm with the guy. Please don't cut those elms down. As a matter of fact, I'd ask you, what would it take? This is what I would have done if I was him. Is What would it take for you to not cut these elms Good down? Good question. Maybe Pizza Guy can answer it. Coming up next on Free Talk Live. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions... The best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook listen to lrn.fm on any phone anytime 213-493-0309 that's 213-493-0309 
This is Free Talk Live. Moments uh, remain. Actually, no, we got uh, two seconds left. You can take control of the airwaves here. Plenty of time for you with your call and thoughts at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And we're talking about trees. Uh, a couple trees in the front yard of Pizza Guy, who has called to tell us about his dilemma. He's frustrated with uh, the decision of to whether or not to remove these elm trees. Apparently, are fairly rare. Uh, I thought it was just a New England thing or a New New Hampshire thing or something like that. But I guess elm trees aren't very good at surviving. I'm that, not real Dutch sure. elm disease. Dutch elm disease. So anyway, uh, you can share your thoughts. Should he get rid of the trees? It's his front yard. Does he have an obligation to protect the trees, etc.? We'll uh, continue with the discussion here, and your calls are welcome at 855-450-FREE. And you need to know about freedomsphoenix.com. If you've been enjoying freetalklive.com and the user-selected content there, freedomsphoenix.com also has some great liberty-oriented content. And they're always uh, providing the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. They have up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. Go and enjoy at freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch as well, Phoenix. Dot com. So we had uh, Pizza Guy on the line, and he unfortunately has dropped off there during the break. But you had asked, Mark, uh, what would it take? Because your position is he should keep these two elm trees in his front lawn since elms are so rare. They're a special kind of tree, I guess, in that they're really susceptible to dying, which, of course, could be the argument to kill them because maybe they weren't meant to live in this lifetime. Uh, but you're saying keep them around, and you would a- you would have asked had you been the tree expert that he consulted about this. He consulted three tree guys. One actually came out, looked at him, and said he would not remove these trees, and begged him to not remove the trees. You said if you were the tree guy, you would have said what would it take to get you to keep the trees? Right. I mean, the tree guy could offer ar- ar- arboreal services to you know trim up trees around maybe make them look better i don't know what he could do but he could do something in order to uh, to keep keep them uh, keep those to make him happier right mm-hmm. um i believe these trees are important now maybe i've got an artificially um scarce mentality around uh, elms but i know there's a lot of problems finding you know good healthy elms out there and the dutch elm disease is killing them and I think that this is a issue of aesthetics once again. That libertarianism, the the non-aggression principle, is uh, which is the baseline of philosophy for people who believe in the ideas of liberty generally, is you, you know insufficient in in this circumstance. According to the non-aggression principle, I can take my dog out in front of my house and beat it with a stick every single day, and I have every right to do so. I own that animal. And that's just fine. No, it's not fine. Why? Oh, it's not fine? No, it's not fine. Then how I come I can cut okay down uh, rare and endangered trees? Well, I think people would feel as though the trees don't have I don't have care the what same... people feel. I'm talking about morality here. Uh, well, I think some would argue that the trees don't have feelings like the dog does. Uh, you know, maybe the fact, but some would argue trees do. Some would argue trees feel pain, and yeah, that, none uh, of this stuff really matters to me. Then we're talking about what I'm morally um, able to do according to the non-aggression principle. And animals are property, so are trees. So, uh, are you arguing? For- I'm arguing that, in fact, there's, uh, you know, that it's the scarcity that surrounds these, uh, you know, rare uh, elm trees creates a. Um, it creates a situation that we sort of need to discuss. We've never talked about something like this on Free Talk Live before, and I'm not exactly sure what I think, but I don't think he should cut those trees down. Like, I don't want him to cut those trees down at all. And I, I think there's much more of a, an equation here, like what's the opportunity cost for him of keeping the trees? Is it affecting something that he's trying to grow? Yeah, it sounds he, like you wanted grass. Yeah, well, what if you, yeah, like, and this is the thing that immediately sprung to mind is, is if I had two rare elm trees that were in the spot where my wife wants her garden, then what do I do? Because she really, you know, this garden's very much about our lifestyle there. But, it's much more valuable than the trees. Well, it, it is to us, but it's yeah. not, but you could put a garden anywhere, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, no, I mean, you might not be able to. It depends on how much land you have. It depends on, uh, you know, th- what parts of your land hit the sun at the right time and the wrong time. It, it's possible it could be the only place where the garden could go. It could. Now, to get rid of trees to grow a lawn, to me, is kind of, 
you know. Why would you do that? Right. Right. I think it's pointless. I, yeah. But I, that's because I hate lawns. Right. And I think trees are much more attractive, pretty. Right. And to grow food, that would at least be a benefit. What are the benefits of elm trees? Do elm trees have benefits? I don't know. Aside kn- from shade. The, the answer is elm trees have benefits. I don't know what those benefits are. And um, I can, like I said, you never know what that thing is, um, that uh, the drug that's going to come out of elm trees in the future. And if they're all gone, we don't get it. I don't know the answer, but I, I, I'm of the opinion that if you have so, r- rare adult elms in your yard, you should keep them. That's so what you I guess believe I mean. that he has some sort of an obligation to the planet uh, to be a good <laughs> steward and to keep the trees? I wish I had better verbiage yeah. for what I believe. I don't think he's obligated to keep the trees. I think he's wrong for taking them out. <laughs> well, we've we've really kind of created quite a lifeboat situation here. This is actually not a. This is more like a Noah's Ark kind of situation, <laughs> isn't it? That we've we've found by really narrowing it down to the fact that these are the last two trees on Earth. So, I. I really, I'm having a terrible time seeing what the value in keeping the trees are if, you know, getting rid of them produces more for the land, for the family, for the property owner. The answer is- I just don't see, I don't see how a moral obligation comes into it. Yeah, I don't know. I I can't make an argument for a moral obligation, but I can tell you that I do believe that if you want um, to save something, you have to create more value in that thing for the person who, Mm -hmm. you know, has the rights to it. And he's got the rights to those trees. And- I don't know how. I, there's nothing I can do other than talk about it on the radio, to or I suppose I can send him a big old check. Well, and what are they worth, right? I mean, if they're <laughs> not worth, worth that to me, if they're worth something to to uh, let's say the you know elm trees preservation society uh, out there, whoever they might be that would want to save elm trees, then they could maybe come forward, as you had said, Mark. The tree guy could offer to prune the trees or something. But beyond that, they could offer to buy the property from him as well. I know he said he wanted to keep it forever, but look, it's just property. And if somebody came along with the right price and said, look, we want yeah. to, th- protecting these trees is so important to us. We're willing to make this offer to you to just buy the property from you. Yes, we understand it's been a nightmare getting it in the condition that it is. And, you know, we understand that you've got a lot tied down. We're going to tear this awful house down and uh, just let the trees grow. We're going to, <laughs> that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, we're going to give you 300000 or 500000 or something like this. Would It'll the change trees, his opinion, wouldn't it? It probably would give him something to think about at the very least. Now, whether or not enough people are are concerned about the elm tree species to put forward that kind of money would remain to be seen. I'm in for 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah, but that's really... That, it's more that's than, what it would take. You yeah. haven't said that, though. I mean, you, know, I you really and care. Brett, you're not willing to go in for 10 bucks. So I'm in deeper than the I don't you guys like are. removing trees from my property, and I've done so usually on your recommendation, Mark, because you always scare me about the roots busting through my. <laughs> My basement or whatever. Yeah, and and here's the other end of this is, is that I hate conifers. Or the other, the, the you know, not just the roots going into your house that way, but branches fall off trees onto your roof. Oh, top, and the trees yeah. themselves topple. I'm going to match your $10 the other way for him to cut <laughs> down the trees, <laughs> but he has to plant a garden instead of a lawn. Mm. Make it 20 I support the garden. <laughs> your move, Mark. He's going to need that money. Uh, I'm, I'm in for $20. Um, he's uh, he's going to need that money to, uh, to, to do all the work that goes into a garden. Cutting those trees down is the least amount of work involved in in a garden. I'll yeah. tell you that. But um, no, I, I, I the re- the reason Ian is is I just I hate conifers. I Let's hate go them. to Mick. He's in Virginia, listening to WSVG in Mount Jackson. Hey, Mick. Hey, what's going on? Go uh, ahead, sir. I, I was raised around I was raised around an elm tree, and uh, up in Indiana and Toledo around there, they got signs do not bring elm tree cuttings across the state lines and. But I have some, I live in Tennessee, and uh, I have some elm trees trying to grow up around my foundation. I can pluck a few of those out of the ground and probably transplant those. But I got a big old lob lolly in the front of my yard, but there's doves using it. It's just making shade. So I think this guy needs to, was a pizza guy who needs yeah. to prune those trees and respect those trees and plant garden sites like around them if that's what he wants or whatever he wants to do. But don't kill the tree. Thanks I mean, for the fill. Where are you gonna th- find an 80-year-old tree? You know, an 80-year-old I mean? elm tree. Thanks, Mick, for your call yeah. and the thoughts, man. I appreciate hearing from you. There's yep. enough room for your call if you make it now to 855-450-free. It's Free Talk Live. 
to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com From hackers and identity thieves to government spies, your online privacy has never been more at risk. Go to UnseenNow.com and learn how their unparalleled encryption tools can keep your communications totally secure. UnseenNow.com offers email, chat, voice and video calling, and cloud storage all for free. It's never been more important to lock down your digital life, and now you can. Stop Big Brother in his tracks. Learn how at UnseenNow.com. Free Talk Live. They have to pass a law that all the guns that are currently there have to disappear in a puff of smoke. <laughs> That's what they have to do. Oh, wait, you mean the bad guys won't actually give up their firearms when the authorities come around well, no, to confiscate them? It doesn't them? really matter that they won't give up their firearms because we're going to pass a law. Oh, that... because we pass a law, they'll just all disappear. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man, it's just amazing how powerful laws are. Yes. How just it's laws aren't a bunch of dumb crap written on paper. They actually do something. <laughs> it's really, really stupid. What will be stupid is if they vote for y- it. Y- yeah, if it, Take taking our away guns. <laughs> you, you know, these criminals with the guns are going to kill people. Yeah, they you already know? are apparently. And if you don't have a weapon of your own, <laughs> you are just as good as dead. Once the laws go into effect that there shouldn't be any weapons anymore because then they know that the good people don't have weapons. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain now, and you may take control of the airwaves and bring up anything that you'd like. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Head over to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features on the site. In fact, if you want to help support Free Talk Live, one thing that you can do to support Free Talk Live is shop with us at shop.freetalklive.com. Something else you can do is if you're having a trouble focusing and feeling fatigued, you want to get that extra edge when it counts, 
Go and learn about modafinil from modup.net. There's a lot going on in our lives these days. Seems like it's hard to keep track of everything and easy to get tired. There is something that could help you get out of the rut, give you the focus you need, and help you get things done. Studies show one in five students use modafinil. It's a cognitive enhancer offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are talking about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work and giving them that critical edge that they need. Check out ModUp.net and do the research that you need to do to learn more about it. They've got fast delivery worldwide for guaranteed high-quality modafinil at an amazing price. Plus, they support the Bitcoin community. If you pay with Bitcoin at modup.net, you'll get a 33% discount. And to make the deal even better, use code FTL, and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. Now, remember... Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It is your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So go and check it out at ModUp.net, M-O-D-U-P.net. Great service at a great price, and don't forget to use code FTL. As uh, we continue here, we're talking about the question of the elm trees in the front of one of our listeners' yard. Uh, He wants to remove the trees, and the guy he called up, and had come out and take a look at him, said he's not going to do it. That these are old growth elm trees and that he would not be able to bring himself as a, as a tree lover uh, to remove those trees. And it's and, you know, this yeah, guy whose just, job is to remove trees. It's not just any old tree. These are trees that are relatively endangered. I'm not claiming that they're endangered by the federal um, designation. I wouldn't mm-hmm. know and I don't care. But Dutch elms disease has, uh, has destroyed the adult elm population in this country. Right. So I guess the, the sort of the larger conversation here was not just whether or not he should remove the trees, but you know what are the ramifications? What are the moral considerations, if any, uh, to this situation? And your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome if you'd like to join in here. I also asked the question on Facebook as to whether or not he should remove the trees. Uh, so far, the response, uh, really only two responses so far. Uh, yes, burn them down, uh, <laughs> says Vic Thompson. And then Joe Tininger says he should eat the pizza. If not, I will. <laughs> so the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. And speaking of yards, I actually have a related story here from Southern California's NBC Los Angeles, where the mayor of an affluent Southern California city has been caught on camera leaving a bag of what appeared to be dog feces on his neighbor's property, according to police. The neighbor says he believes this was not an accident. <laughs> Dennis Near, the mayor of San Marino, a town of approximately 13,000 people just south of Pasadena, was identified as the person placing a plastic bag into the private walkway of a home in the 1400 block of Charlton Road on Saturday. According to San Marino police, the bag was tied closed and appeared to have been intentionally left at the walkway entrance. You know, I got to say, if um, you're the mayor of a town and you can't even count on the cops to lie for you, what's this country coming to? Homeowner Philip Lau says that surveillance footage shows Nier and his wife walking. In the video, Nier's wife is seen pointing to Lau's walkway, and then Nier is seen tossing the bag onto it. Lau believes that Nier was seeking revenge for his opposition to the mayor's dog park proposal. Lau is against the dog park because he believes dogs are left there for hours as their owners run errands. And the dogs tend to fight when left unattended. Yeah. Lau lives a block away from Lacey Park and as such has a no poop zone sign or actually more than one sign in his front lawn. According to Lau, the mayor doesn't like him posting signs like that. But Lau believes it's his right as a homeowner. And Lau told the city council that when people take down their USC and UCLA signs, he'll take down his no poop zone signs. Near had previously said that he found the bag near the sidewalk but told NBC4 that he could not know for sure where he picked up the plastic bag before placing it on Lau's walkway. He acknowledged that he did not reach down and place the bag on the lockway, walkway, but instead that he was standing up and dropped it, adding that he may have flicked it off a bit. And when you watch the footage, it's a toss. I mean, this guy tosses <laughs> the bag. This is not a flicking it off a bit or dropping when asked about the no poop zone sign, the mayor said that he personally doesn't like it, but there has been no animosity between himself and Lau. Nair added the sign is not the look we want to have in San Marino, but that it is not against any city ordinance. Well, it certainly sounds to me like there's some animosity between him and this homeowner. I mean, why else would he have acquired a bag full of dog poo and tossed it on this man's front walkway as he was walking by his house? 
There is uh, maybe somebody could think of an exception, but there is no reason to acquire a bag of dog poo unless you're planning on using it to send a message. Well, no, that's not necessarily true. I mean, he could have been out with his dog, and if his dog eliminated in someone's yard, I just did this recently. Uh, I picked up after my dog, who you know pooped in the neighbor's yard, and yeah. And uh, so I went over there with a plastic bag, and I picked that up. And a lot of people will take a plastic bag with them when they're walking their dog, so it's to prevent the same thing from uh, sullying a different neighbor's yard. So, it, you know, he could have just happened to have had some poop with him, but this certainly seems like a premeditated pooping. Yeah, yeah. They didn't well, mention a dog in the story either. No, there. I don't think there was a dog in the video. So, according to the rest of the story, the neighbor lives two blocks from Mr. Lau, says he regularly walks by Lau's home. Near said that if he had to do it all over again, he would have walked by Lau's home and left the plastic bag where he says he originally found it, or he would have disposed of it in a trash can. I take responsibility for what happened. I'm sorry it happened. This was a mistake. Well, it was a mistake because you got caught, right? I mean, otherwise you wouldn't be sorry. Right. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. So there you go. The mayor uh, probably has not been charged with littering. It doesn't sound to me like uh, he's facing any kind of consequences. So the the police are protecting him at the very least in that way. Well, and, what kind of consequences would there be for um, you know tossing something on somebody's lawn? That's and, littering. Yeah, but I've <laughs> littering's when you throw it on a public uh, is area. It? I'm sorry to tell you that uh, really? the government does. I don't know that the government protects you from having stuff thrown on your lawn. It's hmm. their stuff that they're worried about things being thrown on. Okay, I can't say I've read the littering statute, so I don't really know much about it. Let's go to your There's phone There's not too much trouble generally with uh, litter on uh, private property because the private property owners will get rid of it. Well, there's there's got to be illegal dumping and things like that. I don't know. It's worth looking into, I guess. Uh, let's talk to Charles in West Virginia. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Charles. Hey, guys. Hey. Ever hear of oxygen? Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Trees make oxygen. Yes, There's they... your point, Mark. Or something. <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, trees are uh, really important to help keep people al- alive. You've come to my rescue. Thank you. <laughs> and on the other hand, uh, I don't know if it's a cure for cancer or not, but uh, we export thousands, if not millions, a ton of uh, black elm bark every year. They call it black cohosh. The Chinese and Orientals take it and boil it down and make a tea out of it. Uh, hmm. Whether it really does any good or not, maybe about the same as ginseng and deer antlers and all that other stuff they ingest. Something <laughs> about uh, tigers, too. Well, Rhino- rhinoceros yeah. horns. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, them rhinoceros horns. They, they, really, they really perk you up. <laughs> I had one for it. <laughs> so there's value then to these uh, elms, in addition to just their oxygen-producing quality. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, well, it's value in anything. The way, however you, in the way, how, it's in the way you look at it. No doubt about it, Charles. Uh, anything else you want to share tonight? Well, the dog poo. You don't just throw dog poo in a plastic bag on a man's lawn. You put it in a paper bag, set it on his driveway, and set it on fire. Wait for him to come out. <laughs> yeah, like a I mean, civilized individual. If you're going to do a dog poo thing, you might as well go all the way with it, I suppose. Thanks, Charles, for your call tonight, man. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. You know what the deal is there, right? Like a man comes out, he sees uh, something burning on his uh, uh, on his uh, porch. He's supposed to step on step it, Step right? on it to, uh, yeah. to put it out. Right. I uh, I've never done that, and uh, I've heard a lot about the uh, the flaming dog poo thing, but never really uh, been so motivated, even as a teenager, to do something that mean to someone. It sounds terrible. Well, first you have to acquire a bag of dog poop, and that's not the funnest thing to do, especially when you're a teenager. Yeah, that's a good point. So uh, there you go. We got the mayor who is just you know throwing dog poo around with uh, against people that he disagrees with. And oh, and there's an interesting final detail here after the mayor says that he's taken responsibility and is so sorry about this mistake he made. Oops, I just accidentally <laughs> threw some dog poop on your yard. Where that happened? That never uh, happened. Neither man is a dog owner. So the mayor sought out dog poop. <laughs> wow. In order to... What if he just found it? That's his claim. He does claim to have found a bag of dog poop sitting by the uh, the sidewalk. As he was on his morning walk or whatever. Well, I believe him. You do, huh? <laughs> All right, we're out of no. time here tonight. And uh, maybe we'll talk more about the chalking proposal. There's a proposed ban on hopscotch chalk of all sorts on downtown sidewalks here in Keene. That should be interesting. We'll see you tomorrow night. Imagine a- the warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. 
He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Cop Block Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, June 11th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.25 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,263 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $643. Antiwar.com reports, and a development that is going to shake the Republican establishment to its foundation, Republican House Majority Leader Eric Cantor has been defeated, with just over 60% of the vote reporting David A. Bratt, a professor of economics and a trenchant critic of the NSA spying on American citizens, is clobbering the pro-NSA Cantor. Bratt started out with $50,000 of his own money to launch what many viewed as a chaotic campaign against a well-funded and well-entrenched opponent. At the starting bill, Cantor had over a million and a half dollars in his campaign war chest. Bratt is an incisive critic of the surveillance state. On his 